Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting. It's being held this December 1st, 2021. The time is now 6 p.m. Uh, this meeting is held in a hybrid fashion with an opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law is chapter 30A, section 20. Please note that while an op option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing or hearings will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public will, with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus, versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host a meeting here in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices on uh, 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield, Mass. With remote participation details noted, the dial-in number is 312-626-6977 or 929-205-6099. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The pass code is 570012. The Zoom link can be found on the Town of Deerfield website. Uh, just click on tonight's meeting and the agenda, and you'll be able to see that this particular link. Okay, call this meeting to order. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first thing is to provide the select board meeting attendees the opportunity to share information with the board and to ensure the ability to conduct business in an orderly manner. The following procedures will be used at all meetings. The presiding chair or designee shall determine the length of public participation segment. Speakers will be allowed two minutes to present their material. The presiding chair or designee may permit extension of this time limit. Topics of the discussion will be limited to those items under the authority of the select board, and all remarks will be addressed through the presiding chair or designee of the meeting. Okay, um, the first thing on our agenda this evening is an appearance by our public works superintendent. Oh, welcome. You want, the statement. You want me to read the statement? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the steam mill road matter has been referred to council and stricken from the agenda. Okay. I'm sorry about that, that you came you. down. Uh. All right, welcome, Kevin. Hello. How are you? I'm good. We're all good. All right. So I'm just kind of going off of your, uh, um, off of your pack. It looks like yeah. the first thing is the uh, tree policy. Mm -hmm. um, what you have in front of you is, is just basically the, uh, a guideline by the DR, uh, DCR. So as far as bylaws going, what you're going to do about uh, shade trees. Um, Excuse me. You know, Kevin? Can you, Casey, can you move the module closer to Kevin? Sure. Thank you. Oh, that one's green. You're all okay, green. Good. Can you hear me now? Yes. Very okay, good. Mm. I can hear you now. <laughs> All right, so so uh, you can mute them though, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically, first thing on your agenda was uh, uh, the tree bylaws um, or tree policy. It's just something we need to talk about. Um, yeah. We need to think about, and, and there's a few reasoning behind this. Is um, for the most part, what you see within the guide we've already already have within our system. But what I'm looking more of is, is quote unquote, the town planted it, it's your problem. Mm -hmm. Quote unquote, uh, it's within your layout, it's your problem. Uh, 
um, some of the questions that have been asked of me was a uh, very specific area within River Road and probably a two to three week time frame. Multiple trees came down, blocked the road. Mm -hmm. Those are not town trees. So we incurred over time um, police details, whole nine yards because of this. So I'm not asking for the board to say, you know what, we need to go out and, and find these people or require these people to repay. But I think it's more of, I think we need to understand where we're coming from. Um, prime example is, is, is we get uh, $32,000 a year by tree budget, mm -hmm. okay? Jim's tree service, which is the, basically the ones that we utilize, he comes in because he's the cheapest bid that's come through, is basically at this point $2,200 a day. Mm -hmm. So out of that, that gives me 15 days out of 365, out of the thousands of trees that we have here in town. Um, I need a little relief, some form of action, and to be honest with you, if, if we're going to be continually accepting more responsibilities for these trees and the requests come in more often, I'm going to need to probably double. So you're looking at close to $60,000 for a tree buddy. Just trees. Kevin, I would um, suggest that you put it, put it, we, uh, we've done this before and it always gets cut at finance, but I, I think we have a good argument and all what you're talking about is absolutely, you know, what's been happening and, and we have to take care of those trees. Because you know, we, I had, I had a walk in today over on Grave Street and uh, we went over, we took a peek at it and you're right, it's got to come down. So there's you know, 200 bucks. Now, fortunately, again, depending on the size of the trees, if they're smaller, we can get multiple trees done in a day because um, they are fairly quick. Yeah. Um, but when we got the really, really big ones, you may only get three trees okay. or two trees in a day. Um, and then, obviously, then we have to follow up with um, grinding the stumps. And after they're done grinding the stumps, then we end up having to follow behind them, remove all of the material, and then go ahead and uh, place in... Um, material, you know, hopefully some nice loam, yeah. and then we seed it. And then depending on the time of the year, um, we, re we will probably request that the resident go ahead and water it to keep it going. And if they decide not to, you know, then we have this big nasty brown spot that's sitting there. You know, we don't, we don't have time to be going around and watering areas like that. Um, I'm just, uh, we're, our services that we were providing is outgrowing what I have for capacity for, for employees. And um, it's going to be kind of a, either we need to throttle back on what we do or I need more people. Um, and unfortunately, throttling back is not going to make people happy. And adding more people is really not going to make people happy because it's, it's just more cost that it's going into the town. So that's, that's basically where I was at, and it just was more of a, a, a thought to, to put into your head to think about the, some of the tree stuff as we go along. Do we have a tree bylaw now, or is it just it's we just basically have a, we have a tree warden and yeah, we have we, a line item we add to your budget every correct. year? Correct. Basically, right. what we do is we fall underneath Mass General Law Chapter 87, which is the shade tree um, requirements. Okay. Yep, of the state of Massachusetts. Did, did I cut that one right? Yes, you did. Oh, sweet. Good. Um, and a lot of that, you know, uh, what you're looking at right there, they, they all go back to the ANSI 300 um, requirements mm -hmm. or, or recommendations. And there's a lot of recommendations there that it's going to end up costing us more money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not saying to adopt this, but the nice part about this, because Casey was able to provide this for me. Thank you, Casey. Um, there's a lot of blurbs in there from different towns and cities within the state of Massachusetts. So the nice part about it is, 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 you know, if we actually go ahead and set a bylaw or a policy when it comes to trees within town, then we need to, um, we, can, we can utilize that because it's going to give us a lot of, of good information to start with. Um, now, my general understanding is when it comes to the trees, what the town planted was probably within the village of South Deerfield and then Old Deerfield. Right. Did not do 
arbitrary roads, Lee Road, Set Right, no. River Road, no. No. any of those others. Right. No. But our hillside is a very good one because of all those pine trees that are up oh, there. Yep, that curve, those yeah. all fall within the layout. And they you've weren't. seen how many times, first off, the town is never going to plant right. a pine tree. Right. Um, and you've seen how many times that that road's been closed because of those trees that are coming down. They also damage the asphalt. Exactly. Any you know, of a tree over the asphalt just um, destroys it so much faster. Well, again, you know, when, you, when you're looking at trees that are close to the roadway, you look at what the drip line is of the, the tree itself. And if you actually look at that, you can see that's where the road is all garbage. Yeah, absolutely. Because of the drip line, it's, it's got, it gets wet. It doesn't get the sun, it doesn't dry out, it freezes, you get a small little crack in there, the water gets in there and just blows it apart. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying blow the trees back to the point you don't have anything, but you know, a prime example is is um, Stillwater Road going up the hill mm -hmm. from the bridge. Yeah, the corner. When yeah. You go around that corner, if anybody remembers how bad that whole corner was before we went ahead and redid it, yeah. um, it's gonna do it again. And there's so, not a whole well, lot we, I'm gonna be able to do about it. The only thing that we can continually do would be to put more wear surfaces on top each time it. Yeah. Well, I, I believe we are supposed to take a covenant from the river, you know, for the uh, land conservation for the water department. Yeah. So I think part of that was you had, Kevin, already requested that we have the ability to cut the trees before we took the. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we, we were asking yeah. permission from Eversource. Is that's or yeah, it was Eversource. Eversource was supposed is donating yeah. the land. Right. Yeah, and we just are holding the conservation. Right. Okay. And then you you cut all that already, right? Oh, you haven't done. No. It. I thought we did. We cut that back some. Yeah, very little on the very edge of the road. Well, you're, you're talking going back probably. You're talking probably taking feet. down. All right. Well, what I would suggest is that we more, yeah to be able to this corner back up again. We, we have an opportunity to read this because I haven't read it. Yeah, that. I haven't either. Yeah, so we'll read that. So let's read this and put this back on the agenda for two weeks. Yeah. Like and, uh, it's just something to think about, you know, to Right. To move and then um, between now and two weeks, let's think about your budget. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to clear, I know um, they want to go forward with that conservation restriction on, on Stillwater. They want to move, you know, that was sort of put on hole because of COVID. Oh, but, it was. Okay. But I didn't it, know. It, ha it has to do with some kind of replacement of... Up in Northfield. Yeah, yeah. Northfield. So, yep. or someplace. Um, but I think it is Northfield. Yeah. So anyway, that's going to go forward. So let's figure out the budget for um, that, what would cost Kevin where you want to cut back, because that's coming up. And then what you want to do as a budget for to go request the finance committee and and talk to us about, um, you know, or we'll read this and try to figure out what we can do for um, uh, policy-wise. So that will help shape your budget, okay? Certainly. No, that'd be great. Because uh, this is the time to fix it mm -hmm. or attempt to fix it again. And so I know start. I know I've advocated with you before and it keeps getting cut, but... I, you know, it, it does affect people's ability to have power and everything else in the storm. So. You know, which is realistically the main reason why Eversource came through and did this ground to sky clearing as they've done. You know, I know a lot of people were upset that all of those trees were cut or, or cut back the way they were cut back. Um, but to sound like a jerk, they're the first ones to pick up the phone and say, why is my electricity off? Well, it's because the tree came down. Well, the tree comes down on a power line, it, it goes out. So it's that's why they did it. Um, they used to, and that's actually, we were the last people in Western Mass to be able to get the over the guard rail mower program. They don't do that anymore for anybody. And what they do now is, is that's why you'll see the big tree companies going in and going back away from the power lines. So that, that's their new thought process, because they weren't getting enough done with the over the guardrail systems. Well, I'm glad we have it, because it, it does make a difference, Kevin. Ready for a stupid question? Sure. Our new bylaw for cutting down trees, do we have to replace them? 
depends on what you're doing, you know, and, and this is actually, a, it's, it's a living document, um, so you can go ahead and make your own. You know, when, when you're doing something on the side of the road, if it's a shade tree, um, you're supposed to replace it. If it's a pine tree that's not really part of a shade tree program, then no. Um, you know, you've got, again, you've got different streets where, where people have called and said, hey, this is within the six feet or eight feet or 10 feet of mm -hmm. the layout. Um, and this is your tree, it's your responsibility. So I want you to take it down and I want a brand new tree. So um, that takes my budget and sucks it right up real fast. Yeah. Um, you know, because one of the things we do, and, and maybe we're wrong, um, but when we do it, we try and put a little bit bigger caliber trees in. With that being said, they've got a better survivability rate. Um, they look better, they look nicer. It doesn't take as long for them to do what they need to do to mm -hmm. actually become a shade tree per se. Um, but that comes at a cost, you know? So instead of only paying like $100 for a tree, we may be spending 250 or $300 for a tree. Again, depending on the caliper or the size of the tree itself. Okay. So. Um, Casey? Yes, are you? If we do a policy, one thing that, that like, David just said, if you do a policy, it's a living document, a bylaw is a much harder document to manage. So, you know, as part of that conversation, do you, however you guys decide to do that, we would, we would need to frame some of those elements mm -hmm. that you were just talking about. That's one of the reasons I pulled down that document for him and for you guys, is to understand kind of what the purpose of a policy would be. Okay. And again, that keyword, thank you, Casey, keyword is policy and not a bylaw. Right. Because like I said, as soon as you come to a bylaw, your hands are tied. Unless you go to town meeting. Right. Yep. I know. Um, um, and that's and, and realistically, a lot of the things that we do change. Well, and I was just going to say, it has to be a living document. Are yep. you, um, you know, we have that study done on our um, tree belt, mm -hmm. the health of but the tree. That wasn't belt. the entire. Right. Everything. Was, just so you're aware. Right. It was okay. just ma mainly down village, but it was, you know, we had too many maple trees. If I remember the recommendation. Mm -hmm. Are we planting like oak trees or more climate change? We're, we're, we're planting off of what the um, recommendations were, but unfortunately a lot of the recommendations aren't available, which I don't know why the recommendations were made huh. if these trees are not available. You can special order them and you'll pay twice as much for the tree. Okay. So, but again, anytime you start talking environmentally sound it's just like the jackknife you buy a jackknife you buy five bucks you put police or fire emf on it it's a 25 dollar jackknife mm -hmm. yeah that's what people do well we'll have to well maybe we should update that will be one of the things we should do is maybe look at it and update the recommendation mm -hmm. so that you have better guidance that that doesn't make sense yeah it, it's that's why we started going through it and i was talking with jason and you know, we started going down, and we were talking with the different nurseries around. And like, they're like, nope, 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 nope. Like, well, you got this. Um, yeah, but it's going to be probably four months before you see any come in. So, um, it's kind of tough on our end. There's a possibility we could order some trees from like Fedco, and then plant them along the back side of the highway garage, and then you could just. Dig them up. Uh, there's not a whole lot of room next to the garage, but we do have other areas in town. Yeah, I was going to say up, up by across the mill. Uh, we have all those little weird parcels that we've identified. Yeah, we've got a ton of weird parcels, and supposedly we there's have a sun. town forest. Yes, I know. We're the supposed to be foresters. Right. Um, but there's a, there's a ton of other places that you could feasibly. I mean, granted, would, you would have to clear and kill trees and take them down. That's what I was thinking. That start from scratch. That peninsula at the end of North Main. The old rural lot. Uh, rural lot. Yeah. Um, a bit open, but I don't know what's there for overhead stuff or. It's it's. Uh, that's going to be my after they purchase the property. That's going to be one of the new places where I'm going to have to dump snow. Okay. Because I'm running out of places to dump snow. I know. As soon as you do a Larry lot, I'm done. Yeah. I can't bring in the transfer station. Right. There's not enough room there. So, you know. Well, then, but but then, Kevin, it would be an almost an ideal spot then for your, like, little tree nursery. You could buy whatever's on that recommended list from, like, Fedco, sure. who has 
really a diverse, a really diverse list, and and they're very inexpensive. And then you could plant them, mm -hmm. and then with the idea is that when you need to have them replaced, they ha have grown a little, and sure. you could dig them back up. Sure. So that I mean might be more. Yeah, start, start our own, like say, start our own tree nursery. Yeah, mm -hmm. just just a little patch, but you know. It's a little patch. I don't know, 25 or 30 trees. It depends. It depends on how many you feel like you would go through a year. You sure. probably, you know. Well, it depends on the money you give me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, anyway. The more money you give me, the more trees come down. The more trees come down, the more I got to replace. Right. Well, the Fedco is really cheap, and it, and they but they have little stuff. Sure. I mean, it's good rugged mm -hmm. stuff. But mm -hmm. It's not your big right. trees. But if we planted them in the two or three years from now, you could you'd have a really nice sure. good tree. Yeah. You have American chestnut, elm, you know, all those real popular ones. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll we'll sort it out. Dig safe on here too. Why dig safe? Dig safe, dig safe, dig safe. We are now we're we're part of dig safe. Good. Oh, really thank didn't you. make much of a difference to be honest with you because I got phone calls anyway. Yeah. So now it's now I have to have another twelve hundred dollars put into my budget for dig safe. Okay. Every time I call. Every time they call us, they charge us a dollar. So far this year, speaking with DigSafe this morning, um, we've had over 800 requests. So somebody in town will request DigSafe, and then somebody's got to run out and see what's going on. Exactly. Sure. So, so like, I'm responsible for drainage and sewer. Okay. Old Deerfield is responsible for their water. South Deerfield Fire, uh, South Deerfield Water District is responsible for their water. water. Okay. Uh, Present right now, South Deerfield Water District is not part of Dig Safe. Okay. But Dig Safe has changed. Originally, and the reason why I stayed away from Dig Safe was is we had to provide maps of where our utilities were. And if I said this right here is where it is. I have to be accurate within 17 inches this way yeah. and 17 inches that way. If not, I could get up to a $10,000 fine per instance yeah. from the state of Massachusetts. Did that change then? Because So what it is now is, is no, I don't right. give them the maps. Right. They have to call me and then we go out and we do it ourselves. Okay. So that's the mapping that. system. All you well, have to know from the tree box. The well, yeah. map, mapping system is 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 Gold. sub meter, which is three feet. Right. I'm only allowed 17 inches each way. Right. So yeah. Okay. Um. So that's that with the. Right. With Thank the you for taking care of that, Kevin. Yeah. I feel like that that was important, though. Yep. Yeah. Even though it was a pain. Because the water district said they didn't want to participate. Or? I don't. Well, I think it was a deal where they were like me. They were paranoid of their their records not being. 100% as they need to be, but they have changed it up a little bit now. So now the little box you can go ahead and check and say, I'm not going to provide maps, but you will call me and I will provide the service. So it was funny, as of quote, today, I was authorized as a dig safe participant, and now I have six requests sitting on my desk since two o'clock this afternoon. Oh my God, Kevin. So I got it. EV charger. So so I got it, and then three hours later, it cost me six bucks. Because mm. it's like a, it's, you know, it's not much. It's only a dollar per request. But again, I got six requests within a two and a half hour. I may not get requests for another week or two, but again, you you don't know that. You right. know, people are doing stuff all the time and with, the, with the amount. The, the cost of of a pipe of. Someone's breaking a pipe. And but here's the bottom know. line. Like, like the thing in Greenfield, if, if J.S. Ray or somebody, sorry, if somebody drilled through or, or went through a, a sewer line, that sewer line was marked out. Greenfield is part of the exit. Greenfield has their maps. So if somebody drilled through that, Whoever was running the drill, that was their problem. Had nothing to do with dig safe. Had nothing to do with layout. But that part of the problem is when you're doing the boring, oh, yeah. you kind of know where it's going, but it may be off a little bit. Sure. Yeah. You know. Well, that happened to us with the tree box. Yeah. Remember? We, we hit have random any, stuff you know, everywhere. We did have an issue done on Beaver Drive when they were they were doing directional boring for some electrical. 
And like a year later, all of a sudden I started noticing the edge of the road collapsing. So tried to figure out what was going on. We sent the camera down the line and recognized the fact that when they bored it, they ripped the side of the concrete pipe open for about a 35 foot section. So granted, they were right on top of it. Within two days, they were in here. They pulled all the pipe out. They put an all brand new pipe, no cost to the town, but obviously yeah. they, they, they made the mistake. So they yeah. came back in and took care of it right away. So that's all good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sewer policy. Fun, fun. Yeah. So I can give a little background on this, and I'm, I need you guys' help a little bit. So we've been kicking this can around for about a couple of years now. Um, More than that. Just a couple. Just a couple. <laughs> Be generous. Um, so there, <clears throat> just to, for a recap, um, Residents, you know, we we don't have a water department. Deerfield and Old Deerfield have water districts, and they come out and lead how much water a building uses or a home uses. Um, we do own the sewer, so and the way we base our rates and how much we charge people for their sewer is how much water was used. So um, every twice a year, we get the water readings and then we decide um, based on the water usage how much your sewer is you know and we we'll, we set the rates every year and a couple times a year we get that squared away so um, but people during the summertime water their garden and wash the car and pressure wash the house and fill up the pool and that kind of stuff so um, we recognize that and there's been a long policy of of uh, residents not paying any more than 125% of their previous winter readings. So, um, so that that policy works well. It, not everything is accurate because you know they, they read meters on different times, and it all comes out in the wash. But and and, and all of us collectively have to maintain and pay for the the sewer, um, all the upgrades that we're doing, plus the general operation and maintenance of the plants and and all of that. So. Um, that's kind of how that policy works right now. We have uh, we have a couple, and, and for a long time, municipalities didn't pay. We just kind of were not on the system. And through the town, we decided, the finance committee, and everybody decided that every building, everybody that's attached will pay. So town hall pays, the school pays, library pays, everybody pays now into the system. But there are a couple of areas where the municipal entities and others will irrigate. So obviously that water that we spray on Memorial Field or that Frontier sprays on the athletic fields because they need to be maintained and used, um, that water doesn't go into our system. We do not treat it. It just goes into the groundwater. So um, so we have, um, we have a policy where we've been trying to develop a policy since the last couple of years of doing this. How, how, how do we do this? How do we, you know, before... Frontier didn't have a big bill, and now because they do I don't know, a million gallons of water on the field a year, um, that's a that's a lot of money in the sewer bill. So we they have a separate irrigation uh, meter, and we do the calculations each year and deduct off what they put on the on the field. We do the same for this building here, and there are other entities, very few other entities in town. We think of our farmers, so we were thinking initially for our farmers and our ag agricultural community, how can we relieve them from some of that as well? Um, because we know they water the crops, they wash down their equipment, different things like that. So, um, however, because they're not both town entities, it's really hard. Like we can manage one or two meters to read. We cannot manage multiple meter readings and doing the calculations no and it's, it's not really up to Barb and Sarah to figure all of that out. So um, so what we do have right now is a couple of haphazard policies where we, we do the meter reading. We take a photo once a year of the irrigation meter here and at Frontier and we'll do the calculations and do a, a, an abatement. They pay their bill, we just abate them after the fact. Um, we have an entity that we all decided pilot um, uh, they wanted to make sure that their building was uh, looking nice and had um, nice irrigated lawns, and they, they put in all that sod and invested in that. So we allowed them to put a meter and do the same thing 
with that. We did that. Uh, that's the only entity in town that does that. So um, we had talked about <clears throat> for the farmers allowing uh, an easy way of doing this is allowing people, um, our, our agricultural community, to do the same thing that the residents get. So they pay no more than 125 percent. And that's kind of how we wanted to roll forward. However, we have already set the precedent with pilot to ha and they put in a meter. So we can stop that, that process um, and we would just have really pilot this town and frontier as meters to, to read. And, and what the thought was is that our, our office wouldn't be dealing with that. They would send a photo once a year to the superintendent. The superintendent would request a, an abatement um, through us with the sewer commissioners, so we could do the calculations on we have pilot, we have this building, and we have frontier. Anything else would be uh, if if we so choose, uh, like a farmer, like you know another farmer in town, we could we could offer them the uh, residential program, so they would pay no more than 125 percent. So really, we have one outlier, which is pilot. We kind of agreed that we would let them put a meter in. This isn't for residents. I want to make that clear. Like we can't read 15, 20, 30, 100 different meters out there for residents. Plus, you know, you'll save a little bit on irrigation. Your sewer rates are going to go through the roof because we all spread out need to pay for all the sewer work. So it's really addressing the farmers and um, an entity like Pilot. I guess I'm, I'm, I, I'm very appreciative of you put so much thought into it, Trevor. And I'm, I think we should offer the 125% um, you know, max in the summer. Mm -hmm. Just, But if someone wants to come in and waiver, ask for a waiver, they could get a meter. And the only reason I'm thinking of that, is, this is farmers. Right. Because if they were, um, if they were raising livestock, mm -hmm. their, their winter reading would still be high and that water isn't going into the sewer. So if, if you know, they want to put in the expense of, of a separate meter for their operation, if their operation, whatever their operation is, and, it, and it, we can, they can show that it's not going to the sewer, then I think we should allow that to be, you know, we could on talk one, about it. On a one-to-one one one basis. One one basis. But I think this is most fair to do the for the thing, majority, for the majority, and it's probably the most straightforward. It's, it's the easiest for Barb and her office because she can just tick off the well, accounts and, that and have that. When you think of the farmers that are downtown, like the Glinskys, and you know those are vegetable farmers, right. so it's not going to be an issue to have their winter reading 125 percent of their winter reading right. because it's very limited use. Mm -hmm. Right, but. But yeah, if you're raising cattle, it's a different if, story. If you have livestock of some sort, I yeah. so if we could just allow a waiver on a one-to-one -one basis, if someone had an operation that they wanted us well, to consider. Well, we could decide whether we would yeah. do the meter or we would do the 125 yeah. based yeah. on discussion here. Well, I don't yeah. know, what are your thoughts, Steve? Well, one of the biggest issues I have with it is we have no control over the meters. Correct. That's the true. water district does. Yep. And it's incumbent on the resident to, and now that they're doing electronic reading on the meters, it's not like the old days when they were actually going into the cellars and stuff and reading them. It doesn't take them long to read them. Right. So putting in multiple meters is not an issue. It's an expense, but it's an expense for the homeowner mm -hmm. or whoever. The entity. Yeah, the, the entity, entity that we're talking yeah. about. Um, so um, it's just has to be a simple, like, so it is a photo November 1st. Yeah, I can understand the photo with municipal things. The photos I have a problem with with private residents. Well, it wouldn't be a private residence. No private residence would be allowed. It's only agricultural yeah. farm. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it would be, and, it, I, I, and again, it would ha they'd have to come in and yeah. they'd have to have they have to yeah. request the abatement. We're not just no. going to automatically. No. Well, abatement. they would. They'd have to request the waiver of of the 125 percent and put in a separate meter themselves. You know, I mean, they're. But, then, but then we're relying on them yes. to get a photo yeah. of that meter, and but we that have, would, and we need that's that for our the year. Yeah, but that would where our discussion would come in. Is it? 
you know, something that we want to consider. And, I just want the option to consider it, but not. But we would be, um, we're relying on, you know, saddling Kevin with getting these photos each uh -huh. year. And, you know, uh -huh. I, I just want to make sure it's a, that's why the 125% was an easiest thing. I know we already opened the door with pilot with this meter. I don't think there's another entity other than them. Um, I, I think other than um, Pelican has dual meters. Okay. Only because they, uh, before they went to the water cooling towers, they were actually just using water right. to cool. Yep. And they were using a lot, a lot of water. Yeah. They were actually the largest user in town, but mm -hmm. um, even larger than Oxford Pickle was at the time. Mm -hmm. So. Um, oh, I didn't realize that. But the, uh, you know, and we're really only talking what four farms. Yeah, there, there's not yeah, a there's lot. There's not. There's not a lot. You know, we've and got the Galinskis, we've got the old Yaswinskis. Uh, I don't know what they're going to end up doing there. No, I don't know what has been purchased. Um, in Old Deerfield, we've got Cheslicks and we've got Yaswinskis, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, because Melnick is all private well. Yep. Yeah. It's just that Cheslicks is, is a combination of vegetables and yep. animal. Yeah. So I I really don't know how much they water they use in the winter time. Right. But but it would be you know it is yep. it's very few that would have livestock. And my goal is to limit staff time, like trying to figure out. You know, Barb doesn't trust the meters. Is this right? Is this accurate? Are, yeah. are the meters wrong? Or you know, did the did the numbers come in wrong? You know, they water department can't always read the meter right. I mean, I think we're dealing with this with Frontier again. So like they're they well we didn't get a right meter reading so we're estimating the water usage you know so how does that help us? I know it's a mess. So it, it, we just got to make sure whatever we decide on this has to be yeah no minimal no. work and what? it can't be a saddle yeah. in that office. It's just got to be like okay we get the thing it's up to us to decide mm -hmm. does it I think qualify? Twenty five percent is is that totally seems like the fairest thing yeah. and you know and I think. It's fair only because if we go another route and they have to pay this astronomical sewer bill mm -hmm. and then wait for the abatements, right. you're really cutting into their working capital of for the, of the different entities. Yeah, so exactly. we've got to be careful with that. It'd too. be easier to do because, the 125. You know, the farms, automatic. they don't have that type of no, working no, capital. No, Absolutely has. not. Especially so, like right about now when they're trying to go yeah. through the winter. Yeah. Oh. So I guess we'll clean this up a little bit and vote it next week or next yeah. meeting. Yeah. I know okay. I keep pushing this off, and they're wanting to get, you know, obviously the the readings happened. I don't know if there's a, are we? So I don't have a number, but Barb asked me to put that on the agenda to approve the sewer commitment. Um, right, and so I just need it. I mean, we can't do it until we have the commitment, right? Right. <clears throat> we need the number. So, I know we need the number. So we'll do that yeah. next meeting. Yeah, no, she, it was late. Like, she just got the readings, okay. like, so it is a couple days. Yeah. Next meeting. Okay, perfect. So we'll do that. We'll do that next meeting, and I'll, we'll get this cleaned up. Um, so really, we're left with our municipal buildings, pilot, and then we'll take these um, agricultural... Yeah, because, you know... Um, well, we'll just say a 125, and mm -hmm. if they want to do new, something different... New Pearl's yeah. going to have the same issue as Pilot. Yeah, I was wondering that. I, you know, based on the plan, there's a lot of asphalt and not much grass, so I, maybe they will. I don't know. We'll see. They may have it shows grass. a lot of green there, yeah, but... but <laughs> the, uh, the equipment in there, all the equipment is water-cooled. Oh, so, you mean in their... In their, in in their operation. Yeah. And so... Um, you know, granted, they'll be using chillers and everything else. You know, if they are doing it correct, they'd be using glycol, but the mm -hmm. uh, for, for coolants instead of water. But way over my head, huh? <laughs> you know all this stuff. But <laughs> it's uh, because so, of the efficiency of it. But it's uh, but again, it's less corrosive on the equipment. But, um, well, again, but that's something we can address as we, yeah, we get it here. And if if it's one more entity, but it's one more. I mean, they're bringing a lot of value to the town, so... Yes, I mean, yeah, and, and, I'm, yeah. and I'm not... So I'm, okay I'm just saying that they, yeah. they might need a separate meter. Right. But we can uh, talk about And that. here again, we can address that at that time, yep. not yeah. right now. So. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll okay. get that. I, I, I'm, I, I think it's very fair, the 125%, and then we just entertain waivers. Mm -hmm. A couple. A couple. 
couple of things. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If, if necessary. I mean, yeah. we right. may never get a request. Correct. So, okay. I don't know. Okay. Um, while we still have Kevin here. Yeah, we do. Is something else on there? Another thing? Public safety. Um, yeah, Bill Maripizzi yeah. sent you a note, but Kevin oh, asked you to deal with yeah. the, the retirement question that's lo later in your discussion. So, okay. yeah. I just don't want us to forget, Bill. Oh, do you want to do public oh. safety? It's up, to, it's up to the chair. I just didn't want to forget that. Yep. Okay. It's a very small item at the end of Kevin's yep. appearance. Okay. Public safety? Okay. Um, Bill has had some concerns um, as far as uh, pedestrian safety. Yep. Uh, again, this was sent to Casey, and Casey in turn sent this to myself and Chief Chirk. Um, one of the instances um, earlier this week, a friend and I were attempting to cross North Main Street at Frontier. It was approximately 4.30 in the afternoon. Two cars from either side of the road accelerating through the crosswalk instead of yielding. This is both dangerous and illegal. Of note, I was wearing a reflective vest. and My dog had a bright orange coat. I see them all the time doing that too. The second one is on at least two occasions this year, the wood pilings installed on North Main Street curve have been hit by cars. This curve has a small park which children can play and people can walk their dogs. These accidents could have been lethal. Um, two things that he is wondering if the town and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts could partner together, and I'm assuming that's why he added Natalie Blaine, representative, yep. into the conversation, is installing yellow flashing lights on both sides of the curve to slow down traffic and improve the visibility of the crosswalks using yellow reflective paint. So uh, on number one, his first one for the two cars that were driving by at 4.30 in the afternoon, uh, if you're wearing a reflective vest and it's quite obvious that you were attempting to cross the road, um, people are jerks yeah. is what it boils down to. Flashing sign or painting something yellow is not going to stop somebody like that. I'm not saying we shouldn't include maybe some flashing signs at some of the crosswalks in I different think, areas. Yes. If you do, plan on spending about 18 grand a piece, right? Uh, that 18,000 was right. three years ago. Yeah. So, so call it 25,000 roughly. I think. Those are those are the solar ones. Yep. Those because what I looked up was the solar ones. They do have to be piped together. Yeah. And when you push the button, both of them run. Right. Um, there was an option for the one that was at um, the crossing for the elementary school. Yeah. Where there was a remote that the crossing guard had the ability to. Oh, nice. Um, but again, that was three years ago. Right. So the prices of everything have gone. Yeah. Can, can we um, can we put this under our CCI yeah. part of our um, request package? I think so because I think I've thought about this a lot. I mean, I've, I've thought about crossings and how to make them safe for years. I've been thinking about like it's such a dangerous thing. We, you know, Sunderland deals with it all the time with the with the college kids getting hit on 116, and they've made improvements. And you look kind of what I say, Grampy. So this is dating me, but you know where Grampy's Place store, store is there. They've kind of brought out some stuff to slow down traffic. You know, we I've thought a lot about um, Park Street, putting some, some um, you know, like they did in Old Deerfield, some speed bumps in. You know, I know we'll lose some mufflers, but that has really slowed down traffic in Old Deerfield. I mean, people really understand, like, they cannot go on one. Oh, man, I've learned that myself. I was like, oh, they put in a lift here. <laughs> So um, it really, it works. So, I mean, if we can do some of that stuff, and then I do like the idea of the lighted thing as well. I've always thought of ways that, how could it, how could you be recognized better in that? And maybe it is a, a motion detector or a, um, or if it's just a button or something like that, uh, you know, get across. To go along with that, you know, as far as like trying to, trying to paint the, put in a yellow reflective, I mean, I, I understand the thought process behind it. Yeah. But you can't legally. 
um, it has to be white. Like the ones in Northampton, the ones that have got all the different colored ones, Yeah. you notice that they changed that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. And it's because legally, if somebody gets hit there, There's sorry, a not a legal crosswalk, have a nice right. day. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're following underneath the MUCTD, which is put out by the federal government, underneath the uh, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, is basically who puts those out. Okay. Um, so the white is the required color. Okay. Um, if you're within 600 feet of a school, you can add some yellow to it. Okay. But that's, good. that's, that's an option. Yeah. Um, but it is something, I mean, and then the, the paint does wear off. Like it's in a couple of years, you got to do it again. I mean, but if so it, I, I think yearly, year. I know you do. And, yeah. and that one right there in front of Frontier, because I went through again and looked at it again today, uh, we painted that thing less than a month and a half ago. Right. So you're looking at 60 days. Right. Max. And so I think this, the signage is a better, you know, a flashing sign. So people can, it's hard like when the sun's going down or you're, it's a little raining a little bit. It's right. hard to really see, is anybody really there? Like I feel guilty as can be when I go through a crosswalk and then notice like as I get right to them that somebody is standing there. Yeah. And it's hard to see. Agreed. Your eyesight isn't good as you get older and stuff. So I think, um, I think any way to alert a driver that there is somebody standing there waiting. Well, when it's dark out. Right. I mean, yeah. it's, it's dark at 4.30 now. It is it is difficult to and see. People are out walking around, so yep. I don't um, agree with that. So I think it's something I agree yeah. to put on that, that committee. We, now, we look at stuff in Boston when we go. Is that something we yeah. look at well, for, for yeah. uh, that safe ways to school? Yep. There's yes. But again, these different. are all things. These are all grants. Grants right. that we don't have the capacity. I know. Have a lot of things to go along with it. It's not a deal of here. Give me the money. Have a nice day. I go ahead. There's right. a lot of reporting that goes in behind it. It is, and, and that's I know, another subject. I know. But I, I think we need to pull this all together <laughs> under the CCI so that we have a complete package on requesting yeah. stuff. And and, and I, so I would put it in for there. And I certainly would. You know, we have that complete streets. I know plan, mm -hmm. but that four way. Stop is also it is. It's, it's, it's a disaster. We really need yeah. to do something with that. So, so that, we'll, those two we'll places that. we should put into the wrap in so that because they're expensive, it's going to be mm -hmm. yeah twenty grand. Least, you know, yeah, quite a lot of money to do it right. Yeah. So why don't we approach District Two and tell right. them they're doing the crosswalks on Sugarloaf? They're going to say that's a state road. Yep. This is a private road or a town road yeah. on you. Right. We've already talked to them. And if you were to go ahead and try and do anything on Park Street. You have to get permission I know. from I know. District I know. 2 because that's a state road. I know. Along I with this road meeting right outside right here, technically that's a state road also. I know. So, huh? I, I have plenty of stuff to talk to. Um, right, well, do you have a meeting set up? No, but I, I, we need well, it. I just we have, have to have a meeting set up because we got to sort out Stillwater Bridge still. Well, let's, let's, let's get a meeting and just get something going with that right away. We have, I keep we have saying that we just well, never we haven't. Casey, can you um, try to set up a meeting? I tried to get in touch with him before. Tim mm -hmm. Myers, he was usually the guy. I'm gonna just call. stop and I'm walking well, out the it, door. You know, really, I um, know I'm gonna beat on the door and wait there. Right? I know this is I only the first, but if we we want, we'll have more information. Yeah. Well, okay, if was, could we try to do it for the first week in January or something? Because mm -hmm. we want to do it before we go to Boston. Yep. It has to be part of our complete package of what we're really. I mean, we want one ask. We we got to make a list of all the stuff we're going to ask for. Mm -hmm. That would help, you know, help do that. I hear you. Yeah. Um, to kind of go along with the, the next step was the his concern about the three posts that are right there on the corner. Um, I did get a quote actually today of pulling those posts out and finishing out the rest of the guardrail. It's going to be about another $3,500 to complete that corner. Is, is the guardrail safer than those posts? It's going to slow them down. Just for more. a point of interest, there used to be guardrail there. Okay. And it was so expensive for us constantly replacing them right. that we took that out and put the post in. But now we're fortunate enough that when once they get caught and there's a police report on it, that in turn, there's a company that goes around that they come and look at accident reports, and that's how we've been getting this repairs done. They look at the accident report, they see who it was, they in turn say, okay, send me a letter saying this is how much it's gonna be, and we're gonna go after this insurance company. I say, 
thank you very much. Yeah. And they go after the insurance company, they get paid, and then they come in and they replace it. So we could go ahead and finish the rest of that corner. Um, because actually they were here just this past week trying to do that last little bump in. But I don't want to use the word funny because it's not funny by any means. But 90% of the people that have an accident there, DWI. Yeah. 72% of the people that have an accident there are local and they know it's there. Right. So the only other small percentages is when you come into a snow event. Yeah. Which basically means you're driving too fast for the conditions. It is quite a curve. Yeah. It, it is a nasty curve. Um, Just to kind of give you a history on it. Mm -hmm. my, my family homestead was where the the marker is for the Lathrop. Mm -hmm. the, the, and there used to be a porch on there. But Sunday, routine, when that was Route 5 and 10 going through there, the Sunday routine for the family was to sit on the porch and watch people hit those guardrails. <laughs> <laughs> because it happened every weekend. Yeah, uh. it. You know, and, and you know, I, I can kind of understand the, the thought process of maybe putting up some flashing yellow lights. You want a flashing yellow light in your front yard, 24-7, 365? You need to kind of weigh out where we're going with this, the cost of it, the installation, the, the upkeep. Um, it's going to have to be powered because solar is not going to make that happen 24 7, 365. Um, I think Johnson would have an opinion on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm quite sure. I'm quite sure he would. Um, but, you know, and again, other people that are, that are down the road. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think I would want to be, no. you know, putting up uh, blinds in the front of my house, blackout blinds, so I don't have to watch a yellow light flashing in my front window. Mm -hmm. It's tricky. Um, it is tricky. You know, and that, and Hi. I, I understand where you're coming from. I have yeah. a hand raised. Yeah. Okay. We'll get as soon as we're finished with Kevin, we'll okay. address it. Thanks. So, and, you know, so I can completely understand, you know, the thought process of what we need to do yeah. to try and, and make it safer for people. Make it safer for people. Um, I'm not sure which direction we need, what we can do. Okay. You know? Well, yeah. we'll study it and see what we can come up with. Be an engineer. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Fran. Hi, I just had a question. Um, what has happened to the reflective barrels with that used to be by the crosswalks? There used to be one in front of uh, Holy Family Church and um, down by the library, I think, and I haven't seen those out at all. I want to say Chief said that they were stolen. Yeah, I think they were stolen. Uh, the, small, the small barrels you're talking? Just the, like, yes. the small boat. You're not talking the big, like the, the big barrels, correct? No, I'm I'm talking the small ones that said crosswalk. Oh, state yeah, law. They, they've been stolen. Yeah. And to be honest with you, they are extremely expensive. Really? Because, yeah. And the reason why is because they have to be able to sustain a crash test. Oh, gosh. Because you're putting them in the middle of the road. Right. And if somebody runs it over, now it's a liability to the town. But because if you buy the certified ones, yeah. you're you're paying close to fourteen hundred dollars a piece wow. for a small little thing that sticks up with two pieces of metal on both sides and say stop for pedestrians. Wow. Yeah. And to be honest with you, that money is not in my budget. So, but again, that may be something else for complete streets, and maybe yeah. something else for the road. Yeah, like I, I feel I like we know. just have to figure out an ask. Let's work on that. Well, there's an engineering question. There is, yeah. Well, yeah. Of yeah. Right. I, I, I agree. And uh, but the, and we have to look at the neighborhood. You know, what, what's the impact on the neighborhood? Like the flashing lights. I mean, if I live next door to it, I, I'm, I wouldn't want that flashing into my house. But maybe there's a way. I mean, let's face it. The number of complaints we're going to get because of street lights. Right. I know. You know. To add flashing yellow lights to it. I know. <laughs> Gonna have you to have somebody in on just Bill? lights. Bill, did you want to add anything? I know you, you came to the meeting. I appreciate your comments. Yeah. And, and you've said things before, so we not the first time you sent the letter. Well, I, I just want to say thank you for uh, considering uh, the many options. I mean, certainly, uh, I, I know Dave Johnson. Um, uh, 
I don't want to send yellow light into Dave Johnson's house, but uh, I, I do have to say, I, I have to say that, um, uh, you know, there are teenagers that are crossing the street there and sometimes teenagers don't always look. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I just think that, that uh, you know, we, we, we need to be conscious of that. We need to be conscious that we have more traffic uh, with Pelican uh, there. We, uh, this is not a country road. It, it's a very heavily traveled road. And I just want to say thank you for considering. Yo, funny. You know, with the construction on five and ten, there's a lot more traffic during do, do Main Street to avoid yeah. it. Yeah. Um, thank you for taking the time to bring it up to our attention again. Yeah. We we get so inundated that some of these things just get buried. So it's really good, important good to reminder. keep reminding us. Thank you. All right. For retirement question. You have a retire that require retirement question, Kevin. Yes, retirement of our. I'm not retiring. No, he's yeah. not retiring. Yeah, yeah. Although I think I did scare you a little bit when I. <laughs> you scared a lot. <laughs> you said looked... something to me this morning too. <laughs> I opened the email and I saw that the header and I said, uh "Oh." <laughs> Already? So, uh, you must have sold the house on the Cape, on the <laughs> island. On the island, right? <laughs> it's not here, you buy it. Yeah. Um, our chief operator of the wastewater treatment plant, uh, Keith Lean, Maline. Milne. 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 Our <laughs> every time. Yep. Uh, has put in a retirement letter stating that as of January 3rd, he will be retiring from the town of Deerfield. Okay. Um, I'm at this point requesting that the board accept his resignation yeah. so we can go ahead and post the position. We do need to um, fast. But to kind of give you a little bit of a it's air. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. You're not going to find anybody in the next 30 days. Right. You've only got one operator and he's only got a class two license. Yep. For two plants. For two plants that's supposed to have four employees. Right. And now we're going to have one. Yeah. I think I've got somebody else talked into moving in. And because they have had a class two license in the past, we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of poking them along. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can get them along. But that still leaves two positions open, yep. which would be an operator and a chief operator. Compensation plan that we did, I completely understand, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, but part of the problem you run into is, 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 and I understand the geographics of what they looked at, mm -hmm. but if you go 32 miles, you cross over the Connecticut border, the same size plant, only one of them, not both plants. Yeah. You're talking 115 to $120,000 to walk in the door. Right. Yeah. I know. We're talking $60,000. Sorry, It'll be a different you're animal. not going to find anybody for sixty thousand dollars. I'm sorry, you're not not. The, not someone that's licensed. At least you won't have anybody that that's right. worth anything. I know. If, they, if somebody, so basically, what I'm trying to come back down to is, we are probably going to end up having to hire a contractor to come in and help run the plant. That's a fortune. That could be up to two thousand dollars a day or more. more that's fourteen thousand dollars a week. That's seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year. So when you look at that, $725,000 a year, if we go ahead and make, finally make the decision, you know, talk with Dave and his part of making sure we're in the right area, again, not trying to go against the compensation plan, but if this is what it's going to take to get a qualified licensed person in here to run our plant, you're going to be talking probably minimum $90,000 a year or more. But, um, Unfortunately, these positions are hard to fill anyway. They've been hard to fill for three or four years Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Well, we've been, we've, 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 we couldn't, exactly. we had a whole exactly. summit, a summit on it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, with we, the whole we've been, we've been looking for just an operator, not a chief operator, gotcha. just an operator since spring. Right. And I've had zero. zero. That is through indeed. It, we put it in the newspapers. We put it in mass unemployment. Um, I can't remember all the other There's places. Another co- there were two other places. Four or five different places that we put it out to trying to get somebody. Zero applicants. So that's a problem. It's a huge problem. Um, and with that being said, once you start coming into looking at a cheap operator, it's going to be, it's going to be pricey. It's going to be expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's well. Let's see what the market's doing, and let's get get it going. Exactly. But in, going. in the meantime, you know, I, I've already reached out to Dave because I'll be honest with you. As soon as as soon as I got the email at ten forty, uh, yeah, ten forty eight mm-hmm. Sunday night at ten fifty one, there was an email going out down to Dave Brickett saying, <laughs> "Hey, dude, I'm in trouble, man. I need yeah. some help bad." Yeah. Um. So he's in the process now of, of trying to see if he can beat the bushes for us. And he's also looking to find out what the opportunities are or what the capabilities of different contractors coming in. Mm-hmm. But again, you bring in a contractor, it's not a money sheet yep. at all. Uh, you know, you can't. have Springfield because they use Suez. Suez does a great job. Yeah, they're expensive. But you pay for a premium. You pay a premium for premium work. Yep. So um, I know our our. So I'm, I'm a taxpayer, and I'm also a user for the mm-hmm. sewer. And I understand how much it hurts, but it's going to hurt more. Yeah. There's nothing we're going to be able to do about it. But <coughs> once you have a wastewater treatment plant, sorry, you have to keep it running. Yeah. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Excuse okay. Me. So do you need a motion to accept the resignation? Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion, motion to accept the resignation of Chief Operator uh, Keith Milne. I'll second that. Effective January 3rd, 2022. Any further discussion? Hearing any? All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Troy McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Wolfram Gary 300. Keep us posted on what we can do to help. Yep. Yes, I will. Thank you, Thank Kevin, you Kevin, for coming in. Sure. Actually, I'm going to be hanging out for one okay, more than the. Mr. Preckmore is here to talk to you about the street lights. I yeah. just wanted to confirm because I kept I'll looking just, at him and I couldn't remember his face. Huh? <laughs> He's an excellent your appearance. Okay. Well, come on oh, up. Come on up. Well, yeah, sure. Yep, you can sit there. You don't have to pull it. Yeah, you don't have to you move the mic. You can there. You're fine. Yep. I'm sorry I'm coughing. It's just my, I didn't too much talking today. <laughs> My throat uh, is yeah, I'm on. Uh, I'm Reed Fredmore. I'm on the Deerfield Energy Resources Committee, and there's uh, been a couple requests. Uh, one to put a new uh, light at the new intersection on the north uh, Snowberry Circle, uh, where the uh, Sugarloaf Condos are. Uh, where it comes out, uh, the south entrance already has a uh, Cobra light, there, a street light there. In the pro, you know, during the process of uh, upgrading the LED street lights and uh, uh, looking at uh, on Sugarloaf, there's like uh, 12 lights the whole street. On on, on Grave Street, there's 11 lights. And, and so most of them are spaced like three or two or three apart, uh, but. Um, there's one at the full nine, one at 11, one at full 12, one at 14. And so we recommend moving the, the arm uh, from uh, pole 11 uh, down to the Snow Ray Lane uh, intersection. And one of them, the Snowberry Lane has two entrances, right, or one exit and an entrance or whatever, and one has a light, the other does not. Is that what right. you're saying now? Yeah. Right. Okay. And so the north one does does not have a oh, light. Okay. And so that's what we recommend. So put but most of the graves and most of the lights on uh, Sugar Loaf are at intersections of various right. yeah. streets. Yeah. Any place that there's an intersection or a road that comes in. Um, historically, there's always been a light. Yeah. Um, yep. I, I do agree with with that thought process. You know, one of the advantages is, is the southern entrance is right across from Gramac. Uh, yeah. Gramac and Matthew. So it's uh, it's it's right there. Um, it works out well. 
Uh, I agree with them. Um, you know, safety wise, I'm quite sure uh, Chief Pachurik would agree with that. Yeah. Um, to move with that. Was it in the plan at all when they like no. the, It wasn't in the plan when they put the site plan review together or whatever. I don't know. If I do not believe it so. at all. I didn't know if it was already yeah. tasked for them to put one there, but. Right. Okay. But with that being said, I have had many requests for streetlights. Um, and a very specific, I'll, I'll, I'll pull out my street, West Street. Right. We originally had five lights on the street, and we'll have in the summertime anywhere between 30 to 40, 45 people walking, walking around. Sure. Yep. Um, it's a loop, right? Yeah, it's a big loop that yeah. a lot of people use. Well, now it's completely dark from the corner all the way down towards um, Stone's house. I'll give that to um, I know there's going to be some requests. Is that because the streetlights have been removed or yeah, they're not working? Yeah, removed and, and that whole area is completely dark. Um, and realistically, it, it's a safety hazard. And that was done, what, maybe 10 or years ago or 15 years ago? There was a... Um, no. Yeah, the, only three years ago. The Energy Commission Committee got, had put in a recommendation, and that's when a lot of the streetlights were removed in the town. Right. Now, that being said, I understand that they were removed to... Save electricity. Save electricity, reduce our carbon footprint, yeah. in our yard, save some money. We are moving to LEDs. We're going to LEDs. Okay, so right now, my budget for streetlights is $34,000 a year. Recommendation that I had from the light consultant yeah. is to have, in the very first year, and for probably a couple of years, to make sure everybody's got it together, around $12,000 a year. So that's call it $10,000. Okay. Right. That's a twenty-four thousand dollar difference. You can you can put up. Well, that's where the ten grand comes in. Yeah, the maintenance. Okay. So realistically, to run the lights, he's saying it's only it's going to be somewhere around five grand. Right. Three to five thousand to run the lights that we have right now. Well, I I there are certainly requests to, from people. I mean, I have gotten multiple phone calls from people that want street lights. Some of the street lights the back. Years. Yeah. Because they are walking and it's dark, you know, yeah. you go through patches of dark. Um, but if we put the LEDs in and we're using soft LEDs and we're using directional LEDs, there will be some less luminance avail, you know, out there. there. Will be a little bit less light, so having more lights might be really appropriate. Anyway, and so allegedly these lights are supposed to be what do they call them? Uh, Dark sky compliant, did I call that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Dark, dark sky yeah. compliant. So basically, yeah. we're not going to be producing any more light into the atmosphere, per se. Right. Right, they're more directional uh, exactly. down. They're more downwards. Yeah. Um, my understanding is the lights that we're bringing in um, will start at 50% and then do a step down to 30%. Um, also, my understanding with that is going from 100% to 50% difference. Human eye will not notice the difference. The LED lights that we have at the highway garage, I run at 15%. That's more than enough light, what's going on. Um, you know, obviously we did that for the neighbors. Yes. Um, but we also looked at it saying, you know, hey, we can save a little bit more money, reduce right. our reduce mm -hmm. our cost and, and, and not do any more light scatter than, than right. necessary. Yep. Um, so like I said, one of the big things that we, multiple phone calls so, and requests about extra light. My question is like, well, how much, I know we're moved, say we just move this one light, but if, if somebody was going to add up, so when we get this up and running, we put all the lights in, replacing what we have right now, and then we decide, oh, we need another light, what does that cost? I don't know, that was the right. I asked you, what was the cost of the light? light? Yeah. And what was the cost of the installation? That's exactly the question. Right. I bet you that's a question for Okay. Sorry, Mr. Jeff. Yeah, no. okay. and, and, I, and I can reach out to George tomorrow, but you know, my question was was at 4:20 this afternoon. Yeah, you know, so um, we we'll just have to do a little. You know, the the initiative of this was all through the Energy Committee, Correct. and because of what's happening with 
the offices here, I'm kind of a strong believer that any of these requests should be directed to the Energy Committee, okay. and they come up with a format and then come to us. That way, you know, the, I, I, that I, people right, look at I it. agree 100%. Because your committee can dictate it. You know, it's um, you can come up with a policy of how many because, lights. Because you know, it's just going to overwhelm our office, and we've got so many things going on right at the moment. Yeah. It's just. This is in their wheelhouse too, because huh? this, this has been. Sorry, Mr. Chair, through you. This has been really the Energy Resources Committee's series of projects for many years. This started way back in 2010 when we first yeah. were created as a green community, mm -hmm. and one of the largest projects that they did was transitioning the streetlights and turning them off, and that was people had a huge reaction. I was working in the office oh, yeah. at the time, yeah. and they had a huge reaction yeah. to it. So. Seeing it come back around, I sent an email out. I said, look, you know, this, is, this is coming because we brought the concept of streetlights up again. So I think y'all in energy resources have a better take on it because you've spent more time. And people like M.A., she's very familiar with this. So I think that sort of um, request to, to come up with a new framework for the streetlight to energy resources makes a lot of sense because... You know, this is, I think this is what, the third or fourth go round. We've brought it up, and it's, but it's a decision. That's well, we've been trying made. very hard yeah. to, to together. cut the budget, mm -hmm. but also to be more green. And, exactly. and so this has been a huge, long process. Yeah, yeah. my first year to um, to Boston, we I found that consultant, yeah. and then we were all ready to kind of do it. And then all of a sudden, green communities found the grant to something to do it. We were like, great. And, um, so that's been that's been really nice to see the money saving to do the whole project. Well, huge, huge, huge savings. savings, and then a huge savings. It was like 170 thousand or something. So it, yeah. was 100, it, was 60, was. it was 68 thousand just to purchase the lights back. Right, that we're not going to um, use. And then, and then, uh, and then yeah, purchasing so. all the other stuff plus the insulation, all the yeah. it's, so it's a huge savings. And it's we are great. trying to take advantage of an ever source grant so that we can yeah. mitigate some of those costs. But it was also a, a heavy lift for energy resources. Yeah. We had some help work. from Alice and Gage and mm -hmm. folks up at the COG, but you really have a better finger on the pulse of how that works, especially MA. So the idea is that that if people wanted a street light, or as you're finishing they up the project. They come up with some kind of policy on how you yeah. would, request, would the light. request the light, and then they would re review it and then recommend it to Kevin. So I think probably one of the first questions I have is, is how do they get in touch with the Energy Resources Committee? Because when you go on the town website, it just says energy recourse, and then they talk about the LED lights, and that's it. There's no contact. There's no phone number. There's well, there actually no. is a phone number. Yeah, there's there a voice in the box here. Oh, okay. I'm all, and it is it is on the website somewhere, but I don't remember where it is. Well, to make I it know clear. it's clear. Yeah. 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 Make, you can make it a little bit more clear. Because like yeah. I said, I've had quite a few people. You want me to tell you where it is? Because <laughs> <laughs> she knows. <laughs> yeah, it's... Might, might it? <clears throat> put it. It's um, well, we can we can put it in more than one place. I just had to talk to Ma about that because she's the one that receives the messages off of there right now. And it was it was um, partly it was that mailing that they had done to answer questions. Um, tell me, remind me, Casey, what that the um, community aggregation. Yeah, the aggregation. Aggregation. The aggregation. So that's where the phone number is and the extension. And I just wanted to you know, make sure that she's willing to answer any and all of the questions if we, we put it on their page, but it is on there under that tab. I think I, I, I like I, Dave's idea of going to the energy committee. So we should ask the energy committee to put it on their next agenda mm -hmm. to come I'd up, like to, to come up I, with I a- I two texts <laughs> about how I even like. to them. I want to like them on the I know. You have I know. no idea what you're in for, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's, there was a number of residents on North Main Street that had issues when we took the lights out. Um, there's, yeah, but it's not just I in know, the village. It, there's was there's there, a lot of areas. Wasn't and, there a... Um, there was a couple lights out on Lower Road. Wasn't too. there a needs assessment the first time? 
Yeah. So it may, they may have to do another needs yeah. assessment to kind of study the whole thing. MA, so I would say put MA the thing and in. John Pachorek Sr. literally drove on every street at yeah. night and looked at the lights and and decided. We already so have the inventory of where yeah. the pool. Yeah. Are. So I think. Uh, it was off. And, and a lot of lights were out, burnt out. I think my only kind of comment would be that I think we obviously move forward with the program we have right now, get the lights up, and then. It takes time to get a kind of a list together and how to get a light and all of that. So I just I don't want to have it hold up the project, right? It's not. This oh no, no, this is not. Definitely, this would be right. Over the all have to be done by the end of this month. Right. right. I was going to say the, the, the transition to put those LEDs. Okay. So, all right. No, we're doing that to so get the money. No, I'm yeah, we have to get it done. The one about whether to to move that one light on Grave Street down to Mulberry. That makes sense. That, that makes sense. I'm not sure if it falls under the grant, Green Communities grant we have, but, which we're not going to be using the money to, because Eversource is covering a, a big Well, if we it. can manage to get it within Eversource's time frame, that's the case. Otherwise, Green Communities is going to have to pay I, for it. Yeah, so I got we've been message. scrambling to I, make I sure. I got a that. message from George, and he thought they'd be starting soon. Gotta let me know because I've got all the soft touch. But no, you, you need to talk to to Pachurik about it. You need right. to talk to Jay. Uh, the only only area we'd run into somewhat a conflict on Strawberry is if the pole happens to be on Strawberry Lane itself, because that's not that's a public not, way. I'm, I'm just saying that that's yeah, only where I was there we'll, last night writing down all the. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's, um, all right. Yeah, because to be honest with you, I drove before I came here. I drove down and then turned around. And then came okay. back through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I noticed there's a pole right there, and there'd be no issues with it. Okay. All right. Going there. So okay. do we need a vote then, that formal vote to tell Reed that go ahead or? Well, or it's all kind of hazards part of the process or not? George Woodbury needed your, you know, approval before. So you should take a vote to approve right. the light, the request that Mr. Pudmore's put. So here's another question. I, I would uh, make Wait. a motion to. Before um, we do this, is oh. it going to be? How is it going to be funded? The move. Hmm. Yeah, oh, that's oh, okay. Is it part of the process or? Yeah, it's part of the process. Well, I'm yeah. part of the process. Right. Good. If Again, George it's... says it's part of the process, that's what we go with. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm, just, Perfect. I'm just very tight with my budgets. So yeah. I don't want to see money fly out that I don't care. Oh, no. So, right. Definitely okay. don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> so you make, you make, make a motion money. to um, um, recommend uh, Mr. Pedmore's re uh, suggestion. I'll take that motion to move the light from graves to. To Snowberry Snow, or Snowberry or Snowberry 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 Circle Snowberry North, Circle. North Entrance outside there yeah Snowberry Circle uh -huh. yeah. Cl yeah. clarifying that it is not on private correct court. well I just a good point just want to make sure that was the pool wasn't actually on a street that's not a, a, has not been accepted as a public way so right. we can't get involved with it so okay. Do we know if do we know if the lights that are going in on Snowberry Circle and whatever are those all going to be? Well, that was a question of mine earlier. So happen. actually, MA yeah. talked to George. Remember, George and MA talked about this. I think he talked to you guys at a meeting, didn't he? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I MA talked to me about recommending to the Love Condo contractor about yes. what kind of lights to put in. Yes. And I found this and a, I suggested some lights and to MA to pass on to the contractor, but that that was a couple of months ago and I don't know what happened. So, so my understanding is that they were they were because I talked with uh, they were LED lights. Yeah, it was uh, uh, more of a smaller um, colonial type light. So that's almost very similar to like what they've got in Old Deerfield. Right. Yeah. Um, and that way it would blend in more instead of having a big nasty silver pole right, right. sticking up. I mean, it's it's it looks nice. Okay, good. Um, and but, I saw, but I just, I'll be honest, with you, at that point, I didn't even think about LED, so I didn't ask the question. Right. And it wasn't told to me whether it was LED or not. Okay. So, it's it's nice enough, I, mean, I got his phone number. I can make a quick call. Yeah, and, I know yeah, George. That'd be great. About it. Okay. So, I just don't remember what the result was, but I know they talked about it. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Chair McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried to reserve zero. Well, moving from Grave Street to uh, further down on Sugarloaf. Yep. Okay. I think that does it for me. All right. Good night. Thank you.
Thank you. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a great night. Thank you, thank too. you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Predmore, for coming in. All right. So, um, yeah. Greg isn't going to be here tonight. So. Okay. No, Greg isn't coming. Um, actually, I'll say this before Kevin walks out the door. Greg called me this afternoon, like 4.30 or something, and told me he wasn't going to be coming because you've taken care of a lot of the things he brought to their attention. And thank he, you, thought he wanted me to make sure that I thanked you and that the board knew that. Thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate all you're doing. I'll tell you what, though, hey, the people, that was sketchy. I didn't tight it or not. I mean, I I, we should have given you was, a paintbrush when you were was there. not my intention on coming. I mean, granted, we were, I was tied in, so everything was legal. Yeah. But I had no intention in the beginning of getting out of that <laughs> like bathroom. <hugging. laughs> and when the person inside could not come up as high as they needed to, the only way to make this happen was for me to come out of the basket, put it on there, and I'm holding it. And he's like, I can't get it because it's a cross piece. Yeah. I can't get it, I can't, and that's when I was like, I just grabbed the hold of the, the steeple, hold as tight as I could, put my foot against the, the fire department tower and pushed on it. Oh my And finally God. it was like, okay, good, yep. we're good. We're good. But yeah, I was Heck's not. gonna kill me if I, I was not impressed with that. Right. <laughs> you know. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Great, right. well, great photo, Thank by the way. Too so bad you didn't have a paintbrush, though. So. I know, that's right. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Good night. All right. Kevin, how much is in your building maintenance budget? In here? Which yeah. Is pretty much the only one I got. Yeah. Five hundred bucks. Grand. All right. Cool. Oh. It's not okay. a lot of money. Okay. So we're going to have a discussion about that. Yeah. Yeah. There's if, there's a lot of things that we need when to. You said <laughs> well, I think which is going to be a recommendation from the building committee. Yeah. Of setting up some type of uh, funds that need to be put in annually. For which one? Senior center? For every, every building. For every building. For every owner. building. You cannot have $2,500 so, budget. Well, you guys, and for every, nobody would do that before. that to be significant. <laughs> exactly. And there's a lot of things that all your, your hard okay, work. I'm going to say no. It costs that much for a window. <laughs> yeah, plus the electrician now. We'll cut a wire. No, it's yeah, coming there's, out. There's a piece of condo going right through right. the middle yeah, of the None of us knew about. That's Who knew? Buried in the wall. That's why there's fire in the wall. And, a, yep. and, a, and a moving blanket mm. on the inside of the office. Yeah, okay. because there's a conduit. Right in the middle of a cement wall. Mm. They open it up that? and it's like, well, I thought we right just there. signed up for dig safe. <laughs> right, exactly. But it doesn't count for yeah, yeah, we so built it. cement wall. <laughs> so so here's, here's, I'll be, uh, here's a little bit of a problem I've got is I'm not a carpenter. Yeah. I don't have any carpenters on staff. So once that gets moved, I thought he was coming to put it in. Once it's moved, well, I found wait somebody. I have wait. somebody. All right. Wait, excellent. Thank you. Never mind then. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, yeah, condo. Yep, that was fun. Huh. I wonder why they would have put a condo with there because that was the washroom for the hey, yeah. Kevin. cafeteria when this was built. Kevin. 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 Steve. Okay. Are they going to tell me we need to have a capital request by the by midnight tonight? No, I wouldn't but, about the date. Are you going to tell me that we need a capital request for all the buildings by midnight tonight? No. 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 No, because it's not a capital request. Yeah, it's just going to be less right. than ten grand. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. For each building. Nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents per building. <laughs> Thank you. So we will not fall upon within the Thank criteria you. of the capital improvement. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I wanted to hear. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Select board announcements and reports. Anything? I just want to say the 350th had another successful meeting on Monday, and um, I, the Friends of Deerfield had sweatshirts and T-shirts out, and they, um, you know, the first round, and they were really great. Great. And people, they had a booth out um, in front of DA, and they sold, randomly sold some, nice. as well as the pickup from their order for the holidays. So great. they're going to do another round pretty soon. Nice. And we only have another year. To the gala, really. It's December 31st, 2000, uh, 2021. 
2022. Right. So um, at Deer, Deerfield ago. Academy, so yeah, it's no, not that long ago. away. So anybody that's interested in any kind of volunteering, please sign up for one of the committees. Yep. Um, the events are really starting to come together. I'm and excited. Fun is happening. Very yep. Excited. Oh, there's yeah. Sorry, did you call me when I stepped away? I apologize. Um, no, no, I just wanted to say it, I was so pleased when I went to pick up my order of sweatshirts and T-shirts that uh, what you had set up, and it, it was beautiful. Thank you. And the um, Deerfield 350th website is now live. Um, it's deerfield350.org. So if you have not viewed it yet, please do. All right. I was just saying the gala is really only a year away, a year and a month. Yeah, yeah. a year and 30 days. Yeah. A, count, a countdown clock coming. Yeah. Yep. And, and anybody who wants to volunteer can register to volunteer on the website. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank um, you. And then I guess uh, the February 12th is our climate change forum. Deerfield Academy is going to cater the lunch. So we'll okay. have another lovely... Um, lunch for people to participate and we'll have breakout sessions it's really focused on what we can do as individual homeowners and right. how do we how do we work together to lower our, um, reduce our footprint and lower our energy usage so it's you know because energy is expensive so you know how to make good choices so it'll be pretty exciting hey good, good. um Let's see, so uh, just real quickly, I had a meeting today with the, um, you know, our monthly sewer meeting. Everything's going really well there. Um, people are driving by, they'll see the building up, you know, the, the Headworks building is up, which is great. They're working on the rebar on the floor for the, um, you know, the processing building uh, where the RAS pumps and stuff will be. Uh, all that's excavated and ready to go. They're trying to get a bunch of stuff before the hard freeze goes in. They really want to get the, the slab poured and that kind of thing. Um, but everything seems to be on track. Um, I'm working with Casey a little bit on the, the uh, USDA stuff. I talked to Joe today. He said he knew it was taking us a while. He's working on another thing, so there's no real rush. We'll get together and get that done. That was the phase two um, application. application for USDA and the uh, application for the loan for the overages on, on phase one. I'm sorry, phase one, one A, I guess I'll call it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so everything's going well there. So it's really, uh, they're, they're curious and later in the um, agenda, we'll talk about phase two, but um, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, the builder that's there is anxious to bid it. So um, I'm really excited to meet, get moving on that. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. Oh, I guess it is the next item. Huh? I guess it is the next item. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Board of Health reports. Um, we have two clinics coming up for the second shots on December 8th at the Deerfield Elementary School from 3.15 to um, 7.15. We'll, we'll have second doses. And then on <laughs> December 10th down at Sunderland at 1.45 to 4.45. It's the early release day, so we'll have early hours then. Um, supposedly... We will have booths and second shots and, you know, first shots for other people. But um, this is on color, and it's not accepting it, so we're working on this. Before, when they came, it was all paper. Mm -hmm. um, now they've switched over. They're, they're on color platform. On color. And uh, so our volunteers will help out with the color. But um, as far as signing up, it's a little rough at the moment, so we're trying to get it fixed. But... If there's any interest, please stay posted. We're, we'll try to get anybody that's interested in a booster or a, reg, a first shot, whatever. Any age, come. Yeah. Um, the they before they had everything. So they had Moderna, they had Pfizer, they had Johnson and Johnson. You could get whatever you wanted, and when you you know, whether it was your first shot or a booster or whatever. So. Oh, they're going to do that again? We're I'm, hoping. I'm going to, I'm, I'd like to go for my booster. I had the J&J yeah. &J back well, in May. The color is, to... when right now, the sign-up, when you're, you're not even a 12-year-old can sign up. 
there was it got rejected this morning. So okay. So there, well, well, once that's set, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll yeah. sign well, up. Yeah. I'm hoping in the next day we're yeah. trying to figure it out. Okay. It's just um, a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to go back and forth. So yeah. Hopefully it will, it will be available. Walk-ins they handled last time with no problem. So we'll see what happens. Great. Um, and oh, the new and I've also the new variant is um, not here as far as we can tell, mm -hmm. um, but it probably would be likely it's in Europe and it will probably migrate over just like it's in COVID. California now. Oh, is it in California? It'll be it'll be all over this. Country. Yeah, it's, it's supposedly very transmissionable. But so just be smart about getting together for the holidays. Um, you know, there are at home PCR tests. Um, it, so if you're if you're having people outside your household come in, like family from Florida or someplace like that, um, California, you know, have them have the PCR. T just take an at home PCR test. And They're simple. So yeah. my daughter lives in Florida. She's in California on business right now, and then coming here for Christmas. She should take a well, test. So sure she's hitting all bases. <laughs> make sure she takes that PCR test before she There's walks in your door. Super easy. All the kids uh, at DA went home with a test kit, and they all had to take them before they came back. It takes no time at all, and um, it's just it's a safe, mm -hmm. easy thing to do. Yeah, you can get them at CVS, I guess, but. You know, the vaccine still is your first number one, yeah. um, you know, thing that you can do to be safe. And, and it, it won't keep you from being sick if you're exposed. Yeah. You're, you still, you might not even have symptoms. You might not even be aware that you are, you know, have gotten COVID. But it will keep you, definitely keep you from being hospitalized and, or worse. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then just, you know, just going to stores. What the heck? Wear a mask. Mm -hmm. You know, at least you're not going to get a cold or a flu. Flu is circulating this year, which it did not circulate last year. It is circulating this year. So, you know, wash your hands, wear a mask. If you're going, you know, shopping, Christmas shopping, just try to be smart. Kind of keeps you warm, too, when yeah. it's cold out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, I hate them. I can't wait till we can get rid of them. <laughs> I know. Uh, but anyway, just try to be smart. Yep. We know what works before we had the vaccine. People yep. did smart things for Halloween and we made it through Halloween. We had no yep. surge in Halloween this year. Um, you know, our cases are fairly steady. Not a lot, but um, you know, it is circulating. So just, just try to be smart. Yep. You know, we have to be very proud of the town of Deerfield. Yes. You know, they've, you know, the vaccination rates in this town and everything are just astronomical. Uh, it's just everybody's stepped up uh, and just trying to do what's best. Uh, yeah. it's just, uh, People are being careful with, uh, yeah. with each other. It's very, very good. We yeah. have really a lot of cooperation on when the cases come through. We mm -hmm. have very few that, you know, I have to follow up on. And really, it's, good. Yeah. it's good. Working. Yep. Yeah. Um, DPC contract? So we've got two um, items to look at. Really, we have um, the, app, the application to, um, for DPC to fill out the application to do all the, um, the, the um, phase, phase two of the project. So we want to apply for another loan grant through uh, USDA to finish out the 19 million that we appropriated to do phase two at the plant. So there's a fee, you know, there's a cost to do that work. And then there's all the engineering that needs to happen, which is the big ticket. So, um, yeah, it's large. Um, so, so the, uh, the loan application to USDA, similar to last time, is, uh, Sixteen thousand two hundred forty-two dollars. Mm -hmm. The total for um, phase two design is uh, seven hundred forty-two thousand three hundred and fifty-seven dollars, which includes their their observation too. So you know, normally on a project you have um, oversight, right? And you have a, a yeah construction oversight or something. And and DPC has has done that 
that role for us. And when we're at the meetings, they're there, they're reporting, they're keeping in touch with the contractor. They have a trailer there and they spend, you know, eight, eight hours a day. Or if they're working 10 hours, they work 10 hour days. I think that's what they do. They do four 10 hour days there. So, um, so that includes that as well and all the engineering for the phase two of the project. Mm -hmm. So um, we really want this to hit the street for bidding very early spring, um, late winter, early spring. So we need to get rolling on this really quickly and um, get it on the street because what we think will help is that if we can get, well, we'd love Waterline to bid it and win it. Um, Obviously, anybody can bid on it, but I think they'll have a favorable number because they won't have the mobilization. They're already on site doing the first phase and doing a great job. So it'd be wonderful if they if they uh, they happen to bid it. It is in a it is in a uh, scope of project that will fit well with their schedule if they can bid it in the spring. So, are, are, so are we um, trying to accommodate our timeline for them? Okay. For both, yeah. So we okay. want it out. And and they want it. Well, so, and we also want to expedite it just in case we can get so, something under the infrastructure bill. Exactly, yeah. and I think I, I, I want to make sure that we have that option. Yeah, yeah. and in yeah. talking with um, you know, with with David, he you know, and others, they feel that this infrastructure money is going to go through existing, and you have probably have more experience than me on this. Is that they go through existing programs? They're not going to probably not going to set up another whole infrastructure to push this money out. They have the, the policies written and the people to do it. They're just going to funnel more money towards these things. So my hope and what I'm going to really pressure and ask and beg USDA is that, that it is not a small grant, large loan. It is a good sized grant on this, this second phase. And, you know, again, we still have another whole plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, not enough staff, as we saw tonight. We're down to one person for four plants, for two plants, mm -hmm. four positions. Um, we're going to be in a world of hurt. So, anyways, we got to get these. You know, part of the frustration in getting people is that the plants are, are awful to run because they break down all the time. So this is our plan: is to fix mm -hmm. and move on, or shut down and move on. But this this will be. I mean, that plant will be in great shape when we're when we're done with this phase two to to take on all that. So I would make a recommendation to approve both of these and uh, get moving. Oh, I'll second that. Okay. Okay. So, so the other recommendation is actually a motion. Yes, I'm going to make a motion to um, to approve the application um, contract. contract for DPC for sixteen thousand two hundred twenty four dollars. I'll second that. All those in favor? Hi, Carol. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Carol. Hi, Dave. Wilson. Three zero zero. Three zero zero. Um, and then I would also make a motion to approve the engineering for phase two. Um, basic services six hundred thirteen thousand two hundred and nine dollars and eighty cents. The uh, resident uh, project observation is one hundred twenty nine thousand one hundred forty seven dollars and twenty cents. Um, there is no additional services, so it's a total of uh, 742357 dollars. I will second that. All those in favor? Yeah. I'm Trevor McDaniel. I'm Dave Wolfen. And then I don't know if we've sent this to Lisa yet. I sent it. I haven't heard back. Yeah. So. I I think it's in the same format that she went through and did and David did and everybody was good with, with the first one. So, and again, this is, um, right, so it should be pretty straightforward to okay. approve, so. Um, so as soon as we hear back from Lisa, can uh, either uh, yeah, oh, any yeah. one of us can sign it? I would make a motion to have the chair or, or anybody sign it, yeah. I don't, I don't know who you need to I, sign. I think we should have the chair sign it. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. Yeah. You're round enough to right? Yeah. yeah. Sign. <laughs> I'm very round. Well, <laughs> around. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just, I don't know if those motions state that we have the chair sign. Well, we okay. would you like to see the friendly amendment? Uh, I have a nice friendly amendment to have the chair sign. Chair sign. I'll uh, second vote. that. Yes. All those in favor? I, I Trevor McDaniel. I Carol. I'll abstain. Okay. <laughs>
Motion carried. Great. Two zero one. Yep. <laughs> Sure, commitment for approval. We don't actually have numbers, we right? We yeah. don't actually have numbers, so okay. I will put this on the next agenda. I had, yep. I, I. She was hoping, and she just got them late. And didn't have a chance to get them. So the right. next opportunity is the yeah. 15th. Okay, sounds good. Mr. Don't let me forget. I I have it written down. Yeah. It's some capital projects. Some of them are other capital projects. Yep. Um, and they also include the capital projects that Carolyn discussed at the last meeting mm -hmm. um, that she worked with Jennifer to develop. Yep. Um, and I've got a couple as well, or one. And so there's a top just one. Wicked, um, you know, estimates. Yeah, the, the Leary lot and what that we've yeah. got. Do you want to just go through them? Sure. So we've that got, was, I was hoping we could just go through just just yeah. so you agree. Sure. Yeah. Make mm -hmm. sure we're all on the same page, yeah. and then we'll see what hashes out with the budgets we have. So, um, the one is the first one here. I have is the Leary lot, um, and that is uh, five hundred thousand right now. And um, that was based on the estimate um, between. Yes. CP estimate of three hundred and seventy-eight thousand seven hundred plus twenty percent more. Yeah, we had Ty and Bond do that, and and Ty and Bond's plan was was really just a parking lot and a little mini park, and I think we want to evolve that. So we kind of up, up that a little bit because I I know we want to talk with Hamshaw maybe about that and talk with BBC about the little park there in front, and then yep. get an access out. So. Um, and, and we, we, we hope to I hope to use ARPA money for that funding. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's that. Um, and then the um, I know we haven't voted on it, but that was what my uh, I mean I we have been talking about that. And yes. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's why Absolutely. I put that down. Yep. That's okay. perfect. Um, the next one they have is the demo uh, current town hall, not the police department, and replaced with a new senior center. This is, I think, going to be on for 20, FY 2026. This is the next yeah, year's. Yeah, 26, yeah. 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 And we, we, I think we just stabbed at a number of $6 million of a new building. That's kind of just a placeholder at this time. And yep. obviously need engineers to kind of, there's still a, Tell just for exactly. the public to yeah. know there's a, there is a um, needs assessment going on right now to see what we need for space, and then and then we'll we'll do the and also, feasibility and all. You know, that. I feel like this having a brand, you know three town senior center. We have a really good opportunity to get a grant. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't yep. want people to freak out at yep. the six million, but re realistically, I don't see how we can get away with much less. Right. Yep. Is, so we'll, um, we'll put that. Are you making yeah. little, can you make little markup so I can change the forms if there's anything? Oh, no. oh, oh yeah. if there's anything to change. Yeah. 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 So they far, look good. They look good. Thank I, you. I want to. Okay. The next one is the Senior Center Grammar School Town Hall Municipal Use. So for people who have not um, been to the other meetings, the um, CCI meeting and all, we, we have all kind of collectively talked about uh, and we are hiring a, um, a design firm, architect firm, to just look at what would what would it take to put to remodel the existing senior center building, which is the old grammar school. People know out in the, out on the main street. Turn that into our town hall, and uh, put an addition on for an auditorium and some meeting rooms, and then um, an elevator so we have access to all the floors. So we have. We'll have a lot of storage, which this town desperately needs storage. So we'll have some storage. We'll have, we're looking to see how these offices will fit in there with growth opportunity because we'll have other, other departments eventually. We're looking out 50 years, you know, what, what is the town going to look like and how, how will it run? So um, that, um, that is about a $4 million item and, again, a placeholder at the moment because until we get... And, and you know, again, I was thinking we could use... This is just my thought. It wasn't anything that you all had proposed, but we we know we get that second um, tranche of um, ARPA. ARPA money, mm -hmm. and then it seems to me, from what I'm following, um, 
the infrastructure money for something like this is coming through um, grant opportunities to do um, energy and yeah. um, innovative kind of, you know, moving forward kind of things. So yeah. if we're yeah. renovating that, uh, certainly we're going to have huge, you know, improvements. And so, I, again, I think right. we can make their story. And so, and then we'd also could use CPC money, historical renovation money. Yeah. And you can also go forward with it and, and you know, take a – you know, we average maybe three or four hundred thousand a year. You could do a couple hundred thousand right. a year towards yeah. that, towards that you, you know, for ten years out or sure. something like that. So I think you know, four million sounds like oh, we're we're going to get four million by next year. But the ARPA money comes in, the infrastructure money will be released, and and then we have the CPC money. So and then we'll have to borrow at some point. Yeah, know, but so. I I feel like the combination our our mm -hmm. leverage or our contribution would be the ARPA money. Right. And then future the some money. future grant money from the well, CPC. CPC. There's almost three million that we can use. Right. Yeah, we have some so, in there. Yeah. But the idea is that we can we should be able to do something uh, yeah. with the infrastructure because mm -hmm. this is you know we're renovating it. Right. And that supposedly is how some of that money is coming forward for that. Right. So. We'll see. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Um, so anyway, that's where that combination came up. But I did put it in. The other thing I just wanted you guys to be aware of, I did put it in for 2023, but we're looking forward to it. We're we, moving we need it. To get moving. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I agree. And and I if agree. we get, we have to prove that we're shovel ready. So. Yes. Again, you I mean, design. at some point, if we bump it another year, no big deal right. for our schedule. Of course. But we want to say that we're shovel ready so mm -hmm. we can have opportunities. Yep. Okay. The next one is senior housing project, and I don't know if this is a misprint because there was source. Oh, I see. Remainder. So the CPC, we were looking at about 500000 Well, we had set, set our um, money aside. So side that. was for fi about 500000 Yeah. And um, so I put this in for 2025 because um, potentially, again, housing might be on that list of, of other things that could be available. Right. And, um, and you, you know, we have the RFPs from Sunderland that we can just cut and paste. What did they pay for that? Do you know? They, um, they bought the property, which was 340 something or right, something like that. But the total like cost that. of that project. Yeah, but they, but they, 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 they have they RDI. They leverage. No, I get that. They, they don't have more than. I mean, they had to buy the property, which we have the property. Right. And so. Um, they, I think it was like another couple hundred on top of that. I think Lily, I don't. Lily's not on. Anna Lee, do you remember um, how much Tom Feitenkevich said that they actually used of town money? It was only a couple hundred thousand, wasn't it? After the initial purchase. Anyway, oh Jennifer, Jennifer do you remember? It was around three hundred thousand dollars, but they already owned the property on North Main, um, and they also. Um, got a lot of funding with RDI's stuff, but then they they borrowed money but paid it back. Um, they were paying back their loan um, yeah. by their uh, annual set, whatever their annual budget was set aside for that over the course of so many years. Of oh, the CPC money. So my question yeah. was on the fifteen million. Do you think it would you would need that much? Because I'm, I'm just thinking, how many? To make more mortgage payments for. Oh no no years. no! RDI RDI leverages the money. Yeah. So what, what we're talking about is the the total project would probably be by the time you do 2026 and you're looking at building a house. You know, I mean, 15 million sounds like a lot, but it's probably no. not for 30 units. But what they're doing down there is RDI. Um, Generate some money. Right. They they're they're they had to buy the property, like Jen Jennifer said, and then so they owned the property, and then I think it was really only a couple hundred thousand after that, that and we have five hundred. So I'm wondering, like, do we need? We won't need to bond for fifteen. Oh no 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 no. That's no, the whole no. point of working with. That's them. right. You work okay. with RDI. It's Let's private money. It's because it's truly subsidized housing <laughs> service, yeah. and it goes through the regional housing authority. 
Okay. So people buy the money. Yep. You know they invest and mm -hmm. you know get a return from the money. Sure. Um, so RDI is going to handle that. But I I put it in 25. I was going between Jennifer and I were going between 25 and 26, and I ultimately couldn't remember what I when I was telling you. I couldn't remember, but I, I did think I did put it down for 25. No, I think it's the senior housing. Yeah. It's 15. 15. Yeah. 15 mil, no, for the 2025. 20, 20, yeah. No, you have another one somewhere else. No. No. No, she's talking 2025 20, here with the 15 million. Right. Oh, okay. Right. So, yeah. The 2025 20, year. Okay. Right. 2025 year. Yep. Okay. Now, working with RDI, um, initially we had before was that we couldn't earmark a certain percentage of the property for Deerfield residents. Right. Is that um, still going to be an issue? Apparently, there's a workaround. Okay. And, um, it wasn't 100% clear to me, but um, it feels it feels like there is a workaround. Okay. Yes, yeah. and um, and it is it is we are building subsidized senior housing, okay. and it would be a friendly 41B. Um, I mean a friendly 40B, and which is different, and that's what Sunderland is building is a friendly 40B. So it's your um, a lot of your stuff is waived. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you would if it was a hostile 40B. You have no yep. choice. Uh, um, but you would work with our RDI to do this. Okay. Um, our experience in 2014 with RDI was horrible. Um, but Sunderland seems to be. But the, after talking to Tom, it's, you know, they had a whole changeover from yeah. staffing and attitudes. And, yep. So I'm really excited. I, uh, Lily and... Anna Lee and Jennifer, we're we're all really excited. I Good. think I think we're gonna be able to pull this off. Because we got so close, remember? I do. And uh, you know, and we invested town money and everything, and it was just horrible. So this 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 feels different. So I'm excited. The next one is the wastewater treatment phase one project upgrades, which is the thirteen million three hundred ninety eight thousand one hundred and Fifty-nine dollars. This is a refresh because I was yeah. told by CIPC. That yeah, it makes sense. To refresh. Them. Yep, because we had only five on. We would every year we kind of plug it in what, what's needed. So. Okay. okay. But they also need, you know, they need to recognize that this is a different number. And frankly, I may have to revise this to, to just say, and I'll talk to you about it, Jennifer. To just say nineteen million because if you recall, bond council said we should have that total approval. Correct. So, Correct. So, I'll fix this one okay. for you, John. Great. Um, the Thank other you. thing is, we, Trevor, you said you put in for complete streets. I did. Well, not complete streets. Uh, oh, one sec. I've got. Um, um, Annalee and yeah, here it is. Had brought that question up with Kate. So, what did you put in for the town? So comment? I've got. Uh, well, do you want me to get to that after, or do you want oh. to just go through these, or do you want to do this oh, right now? Oh, the list is finished doing. Yeah. This. So is I've that got. Okay, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's finish this list first. This one here, yeah, this is uh, wastewater treatment um, phase two, two. Uh, project upgrades is also nineteen million dollars, and it's just I think it's just in a different. Did you put a different amount in for the second? No, the actual. No, this says nineteen million as well right. for it's, total it's, cost. So, so. The, so the entire. It's twenty-three to twenty-seven more. Right. Just yeah. years. Okay. So. So one way or the other. My question was at this point. You can't have the 19, yeah, but you can't See, so here. The thing is, that needs to be on capital's radar screen and needs to be on that Excel spreadsheet is the 19 million. Right, totally. Right, total, total. but you can't ha keep putting in 19 million for well, this one, look, 19 million says, that so one. You've got a total cost, but your FY 2020, in this case 2023, do we right. have an estimate? They that were, was my question. They were, only, they were only approving you know, what was granted last time, right? Well, yeah, and we were, they we didn't were, approve the whole 19, if, and we need that million. because the bond council says it needs. But to we be. need a placeholder we, for phase two. Uh -huh. We're going to start it. Yep, we, that's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. Yeah. As long as we're not entering 19 and 19, it's too. No, but I've noticed right. just I, one. Right. We should just clean it up to be one request for 19 billion and be done with it. Well, but that's see. This is the question with capital application. It isn't always clear at the beginning of the process I know, what they want to see. I know. So we can combine that. Yeah, but we I should. want people. Well, but the thing is, is 
the total upgrades project is 19 million. Right. But you have another phase two that the beginning cost of which is almost $800,000 right now. Just the engineering. Right, but that includes, that's including, that's all of that is in 19 million. It's in the 19 million, right. but they want to see separate projects. So that's why I say phase two is a completely separate project. So that's what, why it has a separate And operation. what you do is you you make you make the um, you know how you have everything here separate. It was only so you just make separate the uh, the um, you you pull out and we have separate not under public works but just the sewer project. The sewer project is separated. And then you, you, you say a total of 19. So, so the 19 million is So the is bond more people are more. satisfied. Right. But, then, but yeah. then further out, you you every year is what you, the expenditure for that year. So this is why I wanted to have something phase two, because I don't want us to get smacked in the ass for not putting a project on their radar screen for phase two, even though we've started the engineering. It, it's, it's okay. As long as you put down the 19, then we can explain it at the meeting. The problem is, if it's not broken down, and or and you just keep putting in the 19 million, people think it's 19 million over and over again. And that's the million. problem with this, this difference between what bond council is saying right. and I know. how the capital but We, we satisfy works. bond council by saying there's $19 million been voted, and approved, approved. And, and setting aside. And so how I would do it, if you want me to change it, how I would do it is I would identify in the description, phase one is estimated at 13, 16. phase two is to be decided of a total for 19 million. And that's fine. But I you break, the only you way break out it. this year is like for engineering, next year is whatever we're gonna expend. And you just so that's what I want to be able to yeah. do is because I think it's I, for I a can lot of people. you know I can explain it when we're we're in the meeting but, but you they, have they to make have a point to say to me you have to have an application for everything that comes through they Casey, made that we did very Casey, clear to me but isn't Casey, that 19 million once Casey, uh, an application and done no Every, it's Casey, project. there has been a turnover on the board it's Denise Mason myself Mark Brennan I understand but I also want to follow the bylaw. Okay, but I'm because just saying I I don't want us to be if we approve hot, if, we, mm -hmm. if we if we approve how the bond council wants it the total of 19 million is on there and then we have a breakdown for the rest of us the rest of us will be happy in the meeting. Okay, All right. so I'll do two. two I know you're traumatized, but stop million. being traumatized. Well, no, I mean that was it. I mean, Every no. time I turned around, it was a different goalpost. I know, I know. I'm no. sorry, but it's change committee. Senior housing is again in here. Um, no, 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 no. It's it's eighty thousand for FY twenty three, and then fifteen million FY twenty four. So, so that that came in today from. Let me. Um, sure what was in already okay really? got it that's yeah. fine, really that's that fine. yeah because they were looking for architectural firm money right to get started yeah of 80 for next year so do we want to combine those two carolyn um i would say that I, I you could break out again you want to you want to say the total project okay. roughly 15 million and then we want to spend some engineering money of our, of our already approved 500. Um, in FY23? Yeah. Okay, so we'll do it, it that way. Okay. I'll show, well, I'll not, show you, Jennifer. Right, and it may be bumped to FY24, depending on if we can get any kind of grants or anything. Yeah. But, well, um, engineering. Well, what we're, what we're no, yeah. we wouldn't do the, we need, we need to be looking like we're shovel ready for, um, yeah. Yeah. there is opportunity. But if there's no opportunity, then it really does is going to be in fiscal 25. Mm -hmm. But the whole the whole idea is just to be. We don't know. Yeah. I don't honestly know what is going to be available. We know stuff is coming. So we got to figure. Yeah, I just want so, something on their radar screen so that so that everybody understands that we're following along the way we're right. We're, 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 we're ke everybody's keeping their ear to the ground and we're trying to be. As proactive as possible. Next one is the police department HVAC system, which is uh, $100,000. The year is FY22. 
Uh, but I don't know if that's a mistake no, or it's not because we have money secured for it or something. We don't. We were hoping we would be able to use uh, grant funds for that. Oh, okay. So, but it didn't have a list of where the funding was, so I just didn't know. And what he did right. was he sent the refresh. So he's still asking for the funding. Oh, this was from last time. Yes. Oh, got it, it got it, got it, got it. The okay. project itself was approved but not funded because we were hoping. Gotcha. We so it's just a rollover. It's okay. a rollover. Good. But this time we have to identify the funding. All right. So um, the next one is the Town Common Rehabilitation from the Town Common Ad Hoc Committee via the Select Board. Um, wasn't really sure how who's going to put it in, but um, so this is upgrades and redesign for the Common. We've been working on for about four years. Um, again, I attached a narrative sheet. Um, it is, you know, to to enhance the safety, add resiliency, employ green building techniques, and increase economic and community vitality downtown. Um, so, source, I wasn't sure if we could include this with the Leary Lot project under ARPA. Well, there gonna, there's going to be some grant, some layover, right? Yeah, there's going to be some overlap. There's some. Grant, um, I put grants, capital stabilization, CPA, because there's all kinds of different pots of money that we could pull from. The fountain is historical. There's open space for the common. There's, um, the you know. The problem of going through complete streets with the town common, I know people are so. You can't. You can't. Right. Because we don't own the streets. Exactly. So, so it has to come through alternative. Right. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do in the Leary lot, we want to be able to pull. Right. In some aspects of that, yeah, because yep. I I just can't imagine that we could be able to do the Leary lot in the isolation. There has to be some kind of yeah you know, tie in with the yeah. with the yeah. residential yeah. walks out to the to the and so to the I'm economic. I'm open I'm open to the ARPA I'm open to capital stabilization, stabilization even because it CPA. seems like it could be. Uh -huh. If we need a little bit more to finish it, it would be worth it. MCPA so is fine. This, is this sort of a placeholder, or is this a? This is we want to get going on this. Yeah, we, we want to do it. We got an estimate from, you know, a, a, a 260. This was last year, but it was 296,853 for the probable estimate of cost. We don't. We haven't got a, an exact fountain layout, so there's some play there. So we just added some contingency and, and said we, you know, we, that's about where we're at. We want to make sure that we're working with DOT. Exactly. And that intersection. So because my goal is to bring this to DOT and say, say, this is what we're doing. This is our layout. How do we do these crosswalks? Can we do some traffic calming on park at the same time? Well, they're supposed to be doing all this. You know that that yep. was know. in the transportation. So that's what so, we asked for. Yeah. yeah. So we got to get a meeting together with them. Yep. So that's that project, um, and then... So, and that's 23, okay. That's 23, yep. Uh, Senior Center Grammar School Capital Maintenance. So this was um, money to, that we really need this year, uh, but is to um, tackle, like, uh, I think, dealing with the water infiltration issues, right, and to start moving on that building. Is that correct? Yeah, this is the grammar school building. So it's... Capital maintenance. It's a capital maintenance. It's really, and I didn't include the congregational church. I can revise it tonight before I leave. But no, you don't have. Yeah. The the idea was I I looked at what Greg Franceschi had sent. I've talked to Kevin several times. I did the walkthrough with the insurance agent adjuster. So I see where a lot of these problems are. The envelope of that building is the most critical piece. Yeah. And the town is responsible to maintain the envelope. Yeah. And so what I was thinking was kind of like what I thought about here, which is start a capital fund to keep, to at least start to stabilize our building. Mm -hmm. But I was afraid to do all of that at once last year. So I thought, okay, in this iteration, maybe we think about just doing the stabilization while we decide how to deal with the building. Right. I, I we almost, need to stop the leaks and we need to sort of... I, I, I almost areas. feel like this is, um, this is almost a... I would say 2022 project because we I know it is. Yeah, uh, I we, mean, if we can get money maybe at the end of 2022 for, um, you know, at a fall special town meeting or something to get moving on it. I, I don't know how else to get the funding before that. I I don't it know. It's fall 2022. No, I mean uh, no. I mean in the fiscal year. It's the right, but I'm saying fall of 20, next year. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I'm, I'm talking about doing something year. right now. Oh. 
Yeah, so I put it as 2023, but I heard you say that yesterday. Yeah. So that was one of the reasons. Well, how do we I get it done in the special in town meeting in the spring? Meeting. In the spring. Okay. All well, right. uh, no, well, I would have to say February or something, or wh however we can post I was, it. I told her March earlier. Because how, how are we going to scold me? me. <laughs> well, we should in from the rafters. <laughs> so, but we shouldn't, but we should, I mean, how are we going to protect this over the winter? I mean, Okay. <clears throat> it, it's after. not the wrong question. I just presented it this way. You can take this to capital as an application for funding. And I sort of threw a number at it after yeah, I looked at the no, GRLA study. Right. You did it but right. Really, I think Kevin could maybe help me refine it just a bit. I, 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 I just, the only thing I would just say is put in parentheses 2022. Okay. Okay. Because I can use the 2020 you know form. Could. It's the same form. I thought it could only be a 2020. No, because no, there's an allowance. Yeah. I see. We can do that. We changed uh, the bylaw so that we could be more um, react, not always reactive. We could we could be somewhat proactive. Okay. Although this is reactive maintenance. But yeah. I know. Yeah, here, this is an emergency. It we is. have to secure we that to building. That. that building needs to be secured yeah. for That's the winter. Plan. Nothing I'm else needs to be secured so that we can we mitigate any further damage right and that's really what i was thinking about and i thought about this as i was listening to you all talk yesterday and i'm happy to turn it into a 2022 and send it to capital for you guys to start thinking about it because if there is movement to hold a special over the winter that's certainly something we could implement into a special town meeting warrant um david has a couple of ideas he wants to get on the table as well mm -hmm. So Fine. he'd already warned me. Why don't, why don't we try that? Because, um, I mean, even if we buy, you know, you can buy rubber pads that you put down on, on, in your horse stalls. I mean, even mm -hmm. if we just lay a couple rubber pads, I mean, they're like 40 bucks. And you can lay them against, and they're, but they're real rigid and they're real rugged. I mean, they're like mm -hmm. tire -y kind of things. And you can lay them against the foundation to at least keep the water from going in, weeping in. We've, we've got to do something. Right, and there's I mean, some other I mean, things we don't we're very aware of that we need to fix. Yeah. Maybe we don't need to spend the 150 to make right. it real it. fix right. because we don't know what we're going to do for the renovation. If we're going to move, if we're going to expand it out in right. that spot, then why sense. would you do it? Right. There's but, a couple of areas that we But we have to do some. I mean, Kevin doesn't have any money. And we need to None. do something. Well, now why? We give them $2,500 a year to maintain every town building we have. Yeah, it's really... <laughs> even you know, I've even I before. know how bad that is. <laughs> I can't maintain my house on 2500 uh, No, no. I, I know. I, that's Especially when she has ideas of me building things on campus. Yes. No, yes, I know. Like no, it's good. <laughs> so, it's, hey! <laughs> All right. I think we need to. I asked for a pool. <laughs> I, the only thing I would fix. You wanted this to be FY22? Okay. Yeah. So we, I can do that. I know that not, came well, up yesterday. It might not be the 150000 but we, we have to give Kevin some money. He's got to have some money to. Because some of these projects, I mean, there's some masonry work that really needs to happen to protect one, one corner of that building. And you can see it in the basement. Um, Kevin's been through there, but once I walked through with the adjuster, I had a much better idea of what it looked like. So Kevin's aware of it. I threw a number at it. I'm happy to knock it down. I would like to talk to Kevin so I can revise it. Yeah, but some some of this temp stuff is temporary. It, you can make it work. Right. And he had some ideas about temporarily sealing the building as well. So if we, if we had some money to, to throw at that, I think we could do a better job of mitigating some of those circumstances. The other way that this could be framed in a 2022 request is to maybe consider dealing if we are if there is some movement to save the building which is what I hear start mitigating the mold because yeah. you can't work in the right. building yeah. without dealing with the mold and asbestos we do. Yeah, but the first so thing you got to do is not, not allow additional water to go in yep. yes that's Great. that's really what was in my head but, okay all right, so you want me to rework it. And I wanted you guys to talk about it so you could tell me what you wanted me to do. Yeah, that's the only one. Jennifer, thank you again. Uh, Jennifer Remillard. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Gannett. Thank you again for... <laughs> You're welcome. Out. I appreciate that. I think that's all we have, right? No, oh, we, you, once the sewer system the plant's done, we can have everybody reconnect their sump pumps to right. the sewer. 
Uh, we won't discuss that right now. I can't believe you're um, saying this. You're making why not? The you made other, me snore on TV. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't know where. The only other project that had and That's been, what lowered the water table in South I Deerfield. Know, I know. Is when they put all those sump pumps in. The, they lowered it over two and a half feet. There's a, well, the, it's come back. The other important item that we haven't put a request in yet but needs to is the backstop at that elementary school. That thing is dangerous. It's going to take somebody. I know. I thought we got that fixed. No, because the bid went, you know, it, it, we all dragged our feet on it. We never got any pot of money, and the pricing went through okay. the roof. Okay, so let's so. hurry up and put a form in for that. Cause wasn't well, that? But that should come from Darius. No, it's our property. It's, it's not the school. It's, it's, a, it's this one town, right out town here. Owns it. Wait, don't say the elementary school. Is no. it on Memorial Field? It's No, it's the For this field right here. Memorial, Memorial field. field. No, the other field. The one up by the elementary school. By the oh. elementary school, but it's town owned. Okay, so I asked. Oh, so we're not, we're Everyone not talking like this one. This. Like it's no, it's not the other one. Oh, okay. And I don't use it. But okay, so you need to tell me this before the due date. I know. I can't <laughs> remember everything. Just oh, oh, is that what I said? Yes. <laughs> Do we all say? So what are we doing? What do we need to say? It needs to say backstop removal. It needs um, the the backstop and side, um, you know, ball protection. I guess it is. So there's it's, there's the big backstop and then there's the side. And it's really the bottom half needs to be redone, and then the two side pieces that protect the kids when they're sitting on the bench. The Things right, are falling you out, out the eyeballs. You got to fill out the room. I'll just take some pictures and show everybody. You don't have to take any pictures. pictures. Just write me an email that says okay. this needs to be replaced because I don't know what I'm talking about. And, and you know, I talked to Darius How about, about repairs it. Repairs to the backstop of the elementary school. That's it. That's all that needs repairs to happen. Repairs to the backstop. Fifteen thousand, believe it or not. Um, awful. It's awful. It's expensive. Yeah, but it'd be worse if a poor kid lost. I know. Oh, so we can need to do right that. this level, and they're just oh. not. So where is it actually? So it's the town's property. Yes. Yeah. It's, is it's, it before the the? Is it the one right, right back here? It's not this, but it's right behind this. On Pleasant Street. Street. On Pleasant Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I just so, couldn't. They really use it for right. softball mainly. Frontier uses it. Rec uses it. Sue says Rec doesn't use it Put all that the in time. For 2022 in because. It. Put it in for 2022 because I do not want to go through another season. Well, and everyone says they don't use it. If no one uses it, we'll bulldoze the thing and take it down. How yes. about that? All right. It will be like, oh. Put it in for 2022, 2022. And then we'll find out if no one's going to use it, then take it down so yeah. no one gets hurt. Right. I, I but can, I think, I you know, there's that it's a safety. T-ball happens. I mean, the kids have T-ball there. and Caleb's it's a safety. Like, I mean, we just use it. So. Yeah, it's a safety issue. I thought you meant this one, and I thought no, yeah, I thought you meant good. that one too. That one. This okay, one's so all this set. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was, that's why I kept being. Confused. And we got a bid, and then every like ten days last year, it went up like ten thousand dollars every time you went around because it was like the the metal you couldn't get, and the like, even when Frontier did the track, they had bid a certain quality of fence, and that quality of fence was not even available anymore. So. The contractor paid for upgraded fence and didn't charge us for it. So we got really nice fence around the track now. Um, it, it was just because you couldn't get anything. It was so expensive and hard to find, so they used higher quality stuff. And the million dollar track that we use five times a year. It's a beautiful track. <laughs> no, well, a lot, I know a lot of people go walking on it. What? They could have walked on the cracks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the backstop repairs. Yep. At least 2022. Yes. 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 Because we're either going to fix it or going to rip it down. Yes. It's not. It's a safety issue, and I can't stand the thought that the some little, poor little kid could get hurt. I know. Right. I want to do that too. <laughs> yep. I'm just sorry. I just keep forgetting about that one. Okay, so I didn't realize I thought that, that one. Was, I thought it was fixed, and no. so it's good okay. to know that no, it wasn't. We haven't. We haven't All right, yet. so that one actually is probably fairly easy to complete before I leave. Okay. That's it. All right. All right. Next thing we have is the uh, capital project. Oh no, I'm sorry. Economic development planner, grant writer. So talk, talk, talk amongst yourselves. I got 
Actually, this is funny. Clint, I can't. This I job description I, I grabbed from Brian over in Waitley. He actually grabbed most of it from us. When we were but looking this, at this? Well, a lot of the this. land use pieces of this, he grabbed from our job description. That's actually Jennifer's job description. But what I was trying to indicate to people is, okay, if you're if we're thinking about about how we facilitate this progression of some of these projects because they're related to ARPA, you can start with ARPA and then create an appropriation. Right. But frankly, we need the grants administration piece of it we to do. go with the community development. We and do. It does exist in other towns. It, it has. Um, Irving has one. So. So you know. We, but this is something kind of we just don't, and, and we do have very, we have a lot of work that goes on, but the grant piece of it really impacts the financial department, mm -hmm. particularly the, the accountant, and administering the budgets and developing all those reports is taking too much time away from the day-to-day -day work, day -day work for her. Yep. And so, honestly, we need this. If we want to get to shovel ready, we need people who can actually focus on these particular types of grants because yep. they are very complex. Yep. And David had asked me this, so I just but grabbed that, no. what Brian had. We, this is, when Kippy was here, we were talking about this. We, we were talking planner, about it way we before. We need a grant person. I know. I know. Yep. We've well, got so much that needs to happen. The first time I was around, we talked about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. before that, even. Yeah. I can yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. That's all right. I'm used to getting kicked. <laughs> I didn't know what I did wrong this time. Oh. <laughs> um, so I would really like it to okay. be more of a, of a community development grants administration, mm -hmm. but I wanted you to see something that included different elements because to some extent, and I actually had a conversation with somebody about this today, I thought they were two different elements, but I think they can be combined um, because Amherst does it. So if Amherst can do it, we can do it without. So I was thinking at least discuss this because we don't have an appropriation, but we do have some That's of these funny. discussions that y'all are having um, include planning elements that we just don't have the expertise for. Well, if we're going to be successful in the CCI, which I think we are, we're going to be bringing in money. We need someone to be able to help. Yes, I yeah. agree. We have to. So, we have so much. And to somebody that can it. administer it. Yes. Right. Well, getting the grant is only part of it. You have to be able to report it. out, yeah. and then you got to be able to, and that and that's a lot of work. Yeah. And you got to make sure it happens. Yeah. So we don't get in trouble. Yeah. So, I'm, I yeah. I don't have any problem with it. So yeah. how are we going to start yeah. funding it? My I suggestion would be. My suggestion would be ARPA. Right. right. Start with ARPA. ARPA. And then, into you know, our budget. And because if we have somebody that is quite capable, there's probably enough grants out there to sustain. Mm -hmm. That's oh, true, yeah. but you, usually you, they look to see if you're going to fund it in some form. Yes. Yeah. You can. Well. You always get some overhead or administ yes. admin administrative overhead. Yes. For so if we if we fund it up front through ARPA, we should be able to maintain it and have a steady stream of grants coming in. Mm -hmm. And there's just no way in this day and age you 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 cannot operate a town without being able to get grants. Right. Because you just can't. The taxpayer can't pay for everything. No. So we have to be, we really have to be sharp. Spend money, and, and we, money. That's right. And so um, that's why we start out with the CCI, because we've got to pull everybody together, get on the same page, get some ideas together. Yes. We have some, we know money's coming. Yep. So this is more than normal. Okay. And, and we have to leverage more than normal. Yep. So let's get out there. Let's, you know, let's do it. My question is, do we just need to bring this to personnel? So what we need is or a job this would be yeah this would be a job description and then and then we, we would have do to a contract, contract well I think we first. Would, it, I think we could consider doing it as a contract position first yeah um, because we would actually have to go to town meeting to get this person right. put into the class comp class comp and that'll so be so I would share. consider you know doing this that's the other thing yeah. you have to do is if you're going to matriculate a position into the compensation plan you have to go through this entire process the bylaw dictates i mean that is just a, a contract and services thing for a while it, if, it, if it we learn be, what we need and how we're going to use well, it and, well i think it's important to have the right person yeah i mean you know uh yeah. and what we want you right. know 
how does how does this person feel? You need a job description to sort right. of describe what it is you're looking so for. So if we're yeah. doing it under contracted services, we have the least exposure, but we have the most opportunity. Right. Correct. And, and the other piece of that is, is we have a space issue here. Mm -hmm. A contract is a little more amenable because that we aren't paying for a person to really right. be housed. Right. Um, That's true. But but. It may not be attractive. It's got to be attractive for somebody. Mm -hmm. And I would hope maybe we could find somebody who's got this kind of experience, who maybe is just retired and wants something to do. Or is doing but a part-time in another town and could also do another part-time here, like Irving. I don't know if they're full-time. I haven't a, called Brian to ask. There's a woman that had posted something, I think, on LinkedIn I saw. And she was like, oh, look at all the projects we did this year and winding down. We're gearing up for next year. And asshole, it's almost done. And I was like... Jealous. <laughs> you know, yep. So much to do, and I, I, you know, our staff is just too, just too much going on yep. for what we have. Annalee. Yes, thank you. I'm um, back to capital projects. Kate Lawless and I had been wondering about if any placeholders could be put in to help move complete streets forward. I know we were talking about that earlier tonight in different contexts with the street lights and whatnot, but. Um, and you, you you started to address it and then you moved on and I just was wondering well, what your thoughts I think are. What, I think what we did, what we're trying to do is do as much as we can at the town common, but we're not going to be able to do much with complete streets because we don't have the street. And we already have funded uh, uh, 250000 for sidewalks. We did that last year. We were going to do it again this year, but... I don't. We haven't spent it yet, so I don't think we're. You know what I mean? We we yeah. funded that. Part of it was the question about the street itself. Right, and what are we going to do with it? Because right, now that we, we don't own. Do it. We, yeah. We, we, well, we just asked Casey. Yeah, we just asked Casey to do um, set up, try to set up a meeting with DOT the first week of January, and we'll try to figure out something that we can do with them. The problem is we don't. We don't really fit the complete street. You know, everybody's using complete streets program, and we can't really the way we are. Town, yeah, but we have. That's why we the town common got pulled off of the complete streets because much of it touched it. Yeah, too much of it touched DOT. So I think we're going to do based on what we have. We just Trevor did put some <coughs> stuff Push forward, me. and um, we. We know there's going to be overlap from the Leary lot, so we are going to try to do some some stuff in Italy. I don't. Think, we're not going to be able to do it this. Year. There's just uh, we can't yeah. find everything we have it now. But yeah, uh -huh. I don't. I don't think we're going to be able to do much for 2020. You know, this new other than the year. money we have already spent, already appropriated, right. that yeah. we can use yeah. like 250 thousand. That'll do quite a bit of sidewalk. Yeah. yeah, we should be able to. Yeah, we should be able to get some good sidewalks. We started the drive bridge, like come this way. Started yeah. the cemetery, come this way, and not worry right. about the center of town right I at the think moment. That's a question. Right. That, I mean, that would be wonderful, and hopefully there could be um, some really strong advocates for that as this goes forward and is met with the <laughs> finance yeah. committee and whatnot. Yeah, for yeah. sure. We'll take we'll take any any partners we can in this yeah, in endeavor. Yeah, we need you to show up. Yep. And I, <laughs> thank you. So, yeah. Yes, I'm really appreciative that you do show up. Seriously. Okay, and if there's but, anything um, else, meetings with the DOT and whatnot, give me a call. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So on this, uh, this. So on that, so my question would be, or, or my my thought after listening well, to you all talk is, we need a job description because they need to understand what okay. they're doing. Yep. We need some framework of what the job would be. That's you know, I would just maybe you could work with Anna Lee and Denise Mason and the planning board because there should be a little bit of of planning support in this. So there's coordination with the planning board. In this that job. can happen, but this is a hire the select board needs to consider because it's a dual position. It's grants administration and community development because there's a planning element in community development. That's why I, I am asking. Um, and the planning element is important because you're trying to coordinate. PCI is, is We're taking, trying to bring is pulling everybody things together, together yeah. to be addressed. Yep. But from a planning perspective, 
there is an element of connecting with the bylaws and connecting with the planning board yeah. and pulling that information together. But often a community development person has a planning act, has a planning background. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, but it isn't fully fleshed out in my head right. yet. No, no, yeah. no. It's just, and that's working. why we're, we're I mean, we're still working on the CCI too. This was just, a, yeah. Yeah. this was so just good. to get. Yeah. How else we have these conversations about what we want to pursue? Yeah. Yep. You know, with the legislative delegation and the congressional delegation. Right. Yep. Um, well, but we're trying to be more a framework. Yeah. What's Come well, up with a framework, a job description that we can present to the personnel board yep. after we've approved it. Because Maybe we could do this it. This is somebody that can work with a I'm lot of different committees. I'm not trying to rush you too much, but do you think you could do that for the next meeting? I have no idea. But no is promise. about to become my favorite <laughs> word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's much nicer than that. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, I know. I'm just, I just wanted to fit in with the, what we're trying to do with this. Right. I actually yeah, talked I, to Denise about that today. Yeah. Um, I, we just, are going to circle back around in the next couple of weeks. The whole point of the CCI was just pull people, pull yeah. things together. Right. And yet I don't want to set up another siloed kind of right. thing. Yeah. We, we need to. No, be, no, that's yeah, not we're all the together. point. The yeah. point is not to be that. The yeah. point is to try to share information because we know there are resources out in these. We've got to communicate with the other committees, but the point is that we've got to get something on the ground if we want to try to attract a person. I know, I know, yeah. I know. And so I hear what you're saying about a job description. Yeah. 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 I, I'm just, whatever we can do. I, and I'm not trying to pressure you. I'm just saying, if you can. Oh, I know. And that it's, I'm not surprised because Denise and I just talked about it. Yeah. I happened to see her today, so. Yep. Yeah. yeah, she was here. Of course, we have an ATA that has a little bit of a planning background that could help us too. Yep, we'll pull on all resources. Yep, uh, volunteering you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. well, she doesn't have her picture. Oh, that thumbs up. I hear oh, that. Here. <laughs> I'm right here. Uh, I know. Well, it's just really key that we got to work together. Yeah, right. And we got, and, and, we, and we're under this the is something that you know, yeah. obviously, with federal funding and everything that could be happening, this is kind of essential that we. Get this rolling quicker than yep, yep. Not. Right, and that was kind of what I was thinking: is if we don't get this started now, some of these sh we, we may not be in yeah. a place where shovel ready works. Yeah. Um, because yeah. there is this element of the planning to to your point about coordinating is the planning element yeah. of the town. Mm -hmm. I know I keep harping on it, but this is truly a generational opportunity. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we, we get have it. to we have to really get on the get on the stick here. Um. Okay. So. Okay. Holiday schedule. How about tomorrow till New Year? <laughs> yeah. What, we're off? You mean, is that what you're saying? No, I'm bringing it up. I just want to advise people that, so the holidays actually fall on Saturdays. Okay. Christmas and New Year's fall on Saturdays, which means they'll be observed on Friday. Okay. Um, and I wanted to let the board know that and see if they have any Comments so what, because, that'll be the 24th and the 31st? Yes. Great. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, that gives me Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Well, great. It's perfect. And I'm an advocate for having half a day on the 23rd. So yeah, I'm good with that, too. Well, if you're going to make that decision, i got to notify everybody so it doesn't, so they have time to plan any impact it might have on their, their workload. That's why, that's the other reason. I didn't actually realize it, until I looked at it, Jennifer made me look at the calendar today. She's like, look where it falls, Casey. Said, yeah, oh. she said, she says, we have a half a day on the 24th. I went, well, I have a full day off. <laughs> oh, but that's why I asked. Yeah, I wanted to make that. sure that we were yeah. all on the same page. No, that's fine. And if there is something, if I, if I, if the board you know, has some consensus. Considering what that. everybody's gone through in this town hall. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm a strong believer that a half a day on the 23rd as well. So let's make it a, a holiday. Okay, so a half day? That's my recommendation. I'm, I'm fine that. with that. I'm fine with that. I agree. Okay. Thank right, you. Welcome. Uh, Enough yeah. for the ATA for everybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be working on a planner's uh, job yeah. description. <laughs> I got that already. <laughs> it's already done. Okay, good. <laughs>
Okay. So that that was the reason I need to talk okay. to the department and, and all right. see about impact. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Because it's going to have impact while on barb, then you know. Just we said, EMTs. Yep. yep. That's why. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Jennifer, we're going to send that email tomorrow. Tag your it. Do you have a permit? We don't actually have oh, any permits. Okay. Um, All right. I know that some came in, but Pat got sick. So. All right. Fine. We'll we'll two feathers. Time. And oh. two feathers, actually, they renewed their bonds, so they're all set. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. You had asked me to bring it back. Yep. yep. So, all right. Did that. Contract. Okay. What? Yeah. So. Is your, are you really up for renewal again? Yeah. Oh my God! He is. The, uh, I'm, I'm, I can't cope. I, I'm sorry, I can't cope with anything. Um, until um, my recommendation is that uh, we have an executive session and have uh, Jennifer sit in with us okay. and kind of review things and just kind of. With Kate, you want Kate? You're gonna? Do you want Kate there? Okay, Kate, Yeah. She's gonna. Uh, she generally would handle. I think she handled the contract. Yeah. Um, development mind, but definitely any communication should go through Jennifer again. We're trading one redhead for another. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. You can throw the redhead thing at me. I'm gonna throw it right back. <laughs> no, you can't do that after you've been trained. You oh, well, that's, that's right, right too. That's right. <laughs> on on December 13th, right? Uh, that's right. Or whatever day you're doing. I finally figured out how to like. Yeah. You know. Have a training. Hi. Um. Okay, so okay. Uh, I mean, I have my head. why don't we before the next, uh, our next meeting schedule? Do you want an executive session? Yeah, it'll yeah. probably only take five minutes or so. Okay. Um, but schedule. <laughs> all right, so you want executive session on the 15th? Yeah, if that's okay with uh, you, Jennifer. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. she looks like she's busy. All right, okay. so Jennifer will schedule that. Did okay. you say Kate has to be there? It's up to them. If they don't want Kate there, they don't have to have Kate there. It's it's up to them. But the last couple contract negotiation have questions have included that. Five o'clock. Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. All right. Oh, oh, on the fifteenth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not on the eighth. The eighth is, is oh my like God, it's already packed. The eighth. Clamoring in my brain. I know. Mm -hmm. All right. Five thirty on the fifteenth. Did you, do we have to check with Kate or no Kate? Ask them. Kate, Kate or no Kate? Do you think we need Kate initially? I think I don't. I don't think we need Kate initially. Okay. We'll come up with a guideline and then have her review it. Yep, that sounds good. That sounds good. I'm fine with that. All on you. So what's my Christmas present? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know, but it's gotta be good. <laughs> <laughs> just follow the pergola into the back of my house. <laughs> <laughs> a future uh, invite to a to a non existent pool, can that work? <laughs> yes, definitely. Did we do the what? Did we do the health agent already? No, we didn't do no, that. No, we haven't gotten there yet. Oh. What's That's that? the next thing. That's the next thing. You oh, already did film the another time, but maybe okay. So we talked about it. Did I, we? we talked about it. So okay, Mr. Chair, with your oh, with your with your permission, um, what Trevor's asking about is the resignation, Kalachewski's resignation. Yep. Um, so I saw a piece of paper with six resignation, and I don't have it. It just appeared. Find it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so he's hanging on. He's he's hanging on, not resigning, as the fully the full health empowered agent. health agent. But at last at the last meeting, the board made the decision to um, approve an offer letter for Alex, yeah. which he accepted. So he's been yep. hired. Yep. Um, but I think with Dick still being around to handle some of the soil things, mm -hmm. because Alex is getting through um, his his. Certification. I think assistant health agent is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's what we, 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 we use Valerie like, as. Oh, okay. Did we say a, assistant versus all, um or alternate? alternate? You want to do alternate? I don't know which is better. Ask Dick which one he wants. I think alternate or assistant, either one works. Um, I, I, but the, the board just, I would like you to acknowledge that we've got to do that because actually Barbara's going to ask me about it. Um, and so I need you guys to vote that reassignment so that she has clear direction. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll uh, make a motion. I mean, if, if there is a help back me. letter, I would re, um, There is. Accept. It's just not in Casey's from uh, the papers. Okay. resignation as health agent and to reassign as assistant health agent or alternate, alternate, alternate. alternate health agent. Well, whatever. So one, whatever one. works. Yeah. Is that your motion? Fine. Yes, that's my motion. And I will second that. And I want to thank, usefully thank um, Dick Kalaszewski for all his service to this town for how many years now? <laughs> Almost 20. Over it's been a long time. Over and, uh, it's been more I mean, than well, I mean, I'm talking like it, it's the select board. He's he was the select board for a yeah. while. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, well, no, I meant it's a health agent. I know, just the health agent. Just, health agent. Agent. just all the stuff he's time. done for our community. Yeah. Yeah. Building, just, it was over 15, right? Astounding, but at least. He, did, he did two jobs really. Yeah. And, um, I, and he, it would be but the thing is, he would be on, he would be on call. You give him a certification. We sure will. Yeah. Hey, Jennifer, you can do a certification. <laughs> well, I mean, but it's little stuff like, oh, you know, yeah, the, kinds of things. someone with a learner's permit hit the stairs on, on a, you yeah. know, Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. The police call him, he runs over. Says it's okay or not okay, yeah. and goes home. And I mean, no one knows how many hours right. of those constant, hours. Constant constant. Little things here and there. Yeah. You know, um, you know it's just, and that was just recently. I mean, so you guys really should do a certification. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll do Remember more than that. when you called me this afternoon? Cupcake party or something. And somebody saying thank you in a in a way that is meaningful really makes an impact. Because yeah. I listened. I listened to Carolyn show that to me on the phone today. Yeah. Somebody gave her a thank you. Yeah. And I think it's important that you want to recognize the service to the town. So let's make it. Yeah. Let's make something I, pretty. I, I, I out of the blue mm -hmm. to get that little plaque saying, "Thank you for stabilizing the mudslide." <laughs> nice little. <laughs> it is. It's important. To... I mean, I can believe it. I was like, yeah. "This is so wicked, wicked thoughtful." It's nice. I it is nice to finally get acknowledged once in a while. I know, I know. I was like, a, take 10 minutes. That was after the sheriff was at my door with the little lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty nice. <laughs> okay, so did you second that, Trevor? The motion? Oh, I Carol, thought I made the did motion. Did you second that? Yeah, I, I made the motion. Yeah. Okay. All those are in favor. Hi, Trevor. Hi. We we're having a long night. <laughs> oh, Dave Wolfram. 300. Yeah. Vote, yes, I. I'm pretty sure I did, but in between the laughs, she just I said was. I was up. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it snorted yeah, again. Second time. I, I had that idea. This is really bad. Yeah, I can't help. Better it. get off camera quick. Yeah, we're a little punchy. We've yep. had a day, folks. It's been a long day. Done. I, I okay. was just reminded by the superintendent that I swore. I apologize. I didn't hear it. Too late. He did. He should be sleeping. So, it's up in two hours. So, I, I apologize. I will. I didn't hear it. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm not really worried. I'm going to leave this for you if you want to scan it. Yeah. Uh, whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, mail? Oh, so, Carolyn, to your question about the historic preservation for that PVMA lot. I did talk to Donna McNichol, who's um, Tim's lawyer up at PVMA, mm -hmm. and they've been trying to get in touch with MHC <coughs> Mass Historical. Generally, Mass Historical dictates the language of the historical preservation um, document itself, and they haven't been able to get a response. So I did talk to council, and council would review it once it's all complete, and I sent that information back to Donna because we would hold the historical preservation, but there's an issue with that, that I think not only is MHC being slow to respond that our council's experienced, but it's, they're just hard to get. <coughs> so I was gonna see if I could um, contact a friend who might be able to get in touch with them and the, um, see if you can get back. Do you know how much this is gonna be? There's no supporting documents with it. No, it's, oh, it's, the, it's the preservation language itself. Okay. It, and that PVMA has to do that, but they have to do it according to what MHC says. And and Tim, so you we know, don't really Tim have is, too much to say about Tim it. Tim is always on top of stuff, and he's freaking out because it has to be done by July 1st. And he he has he, they've been working trying to get Mass Historical 
Society too. And, they're not. and that's what Donna said. For that. over a year. Yeah. And and they've been working. It, so he's freaking out. So you really want to freak him out? Well. I'm a firm believer of 501Cs should not be getting CPA funds. Well, I know. No, but they, they don't have any money. They don't have any money. And well, town meeting voted it, Dave. I know, but I'm just saying. I know, just, I know. But it is, right it is a town asset in the sense that it's our heritage. Mm -hmm. And and you can't let the – they did a beautiful job, and you can't let the building fall apart. And so no. that's the thing. Is so they're trying to get MHC to respond, and it all comes back to the fact that MHC is being, is being slow. Mm -hmm. So I wanted – you to know that we were we had communicated that stuff and we're waiting to hear back from. I'm trying to see if there's somebody I can call to help them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did want you to know I got a phone call from the assistant AG today. The National Opioid Settlement sign on. We got some information several months ago. Mm -hmm. It looks like we get like a couple pennies. Yeah, you get a couple pennies, but it really goes toward assisting, and and this is the reason the AG is. is asking people and physically calling people, which they don't usually do. Um, it helps the entire state in terms of the settle, how the settlement is distributed throughout the country. So what so if we just need to sign to it? We just need to yeah, sign the document, do but we need to vote them. So I put okay. it on the agenda and I told her this. All right. um, I'm going to put it on the agenda for the 15th for you guys to sign on. Right. But I wanted you to see what the... How much money is it? It's yeah, point I don't know. It's point, yeah, it's point oh seven percent of the total fund. Maybe 10 coming. bucks. Yeah. yeah, and they don't even know what the total millions are. Like They don't know how it's going to be distributed. So the issue, you have a percentage number, which is kind of what we got in the first yeah, round of the ARPA question was, here's your estimate. Mm -hmm. So, but if nobody signs on for it, it, it lowers what the probability of what the state will get mm. to a certain number. So, so they're trying to encourage that. And so basically it's doesn't it's even money to, it doesn't even cover the cost for me to bury my son from an opiate addiction. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that would be, but I do know that when I, I do, bring it up to you, I, I knew I, that I, I, I would hear support. Yeah. From it won't you. even cover our, you know, cost yeah. of our, you know, those um Narcan. It would not even cover that. I don't know what it's going to cover. It depends on what we do. Okay. But we'll be yeah. glad to sign off on yeah. it. But, but frankly, I think I wanted the board to see this so they could think about it and, and decide whether they want to sign on. I think it's a, yeah, no, I think it's sure. useful just because the old so many crisis people have impacted been everyone. devastated. It's devastated. There isn't anybody that hasn't been no. somewhat affected. Everybody, yeah. everybody has. You know somebody who doesn't know. Yes. What the demographics of the area are, yep, everybody is. Right. And so, yeah. in some ways, dear friends, young, young, right to young old. Yeah, and everybody in this sports program. Yep, we will. Especially the people in the beginning had, you know, there was no awareness, and they were taken awful. Great movie on Showtime called Dope Sick. It's all about this thing, about yep. that family, about how they marketed this. They knew. They knew. Yeah. How it was, was gross. You can mm -hmm. tell he watched too much of watches. Netflix. Yep. Yep. And the other thing I got today, and I literally got it this afternoon, was a email from Rachel Stoller over at the COGS. They are part of they're they're putting a grant together for Mass in Motion, which is a municipal wellness yep. program. And it's a lot of the things that are involved in this are geared toward elders and age friendly communities, which we are. Yep. So they actually need support from the town by the thirteenth. I can't push this one off to the 15th okay. and just notify you. So we'll make I'm a wondering motion that we send a letter of support. And so there's a sign-in thing. If you want me to put the town and everything, yeah. in, I can do that. I just want the board just, to hear why. I'm yeah. Concerned. No, I'm, I'm agree. Would you please so make it a little bit more personal than just the straight template? Because there's if you, a sign-on document, so I would oh. need to fill out the sign-on document. Okay. Um, and it's in here. It's just, but it so. gives you it gives you the description as well. Okay. Um, and so we would be a partner on the application. Yes. And I would, if the board's okay with that, I would sign on um, as representing the town yep. in the participant agreement. If you want David to sign it, no, it's fine. I'll fill it out for him to sign no. it too. It's just up no, to you. No, 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 it's fine. Make a motion to have Casey sign that. Yep. 
Yeah. I, I will second that. Mm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Daniel. Aye, Dave Wolf. Aye, Carol. Um, my report. We have a recommendation from the search committee for the senior center director applicant. Um, sent it out last week, knowing, you know, for everybody's information, but I'm asking if the, either the chairs of the BOO and the select board um, schedule meetings or have the town administrators coordinate to schedule meetings. We need to put, we need to actually move forward so we can okay. do final interviews. Ooh. And the finalists are identified in the memo. Um, so what I'd like to be able to do is just sort of put this on your radar screen because my thought could be that it would it would be its own separate meeting, which I know is difficult before the holidays. But we're in a situation mm -hmm. where we're actually yeah, we'll we're there. making some literally doing some planning changes to support Sucori over right. with we senior services in our office. So we problem. need to make this happen faster. So mm -hmm. I know that it's the holidays, but we need to figure that out. Yeah. So no, you would just. So, do you want to talk to Jonathan, or do you want me to reach out to the other two town administrators and yeah. figure out so a doodle poll? To the town administrators. Okay. The three of us can. Yeah, sort it out. Um. Five. Next week is act, but I could do the week of the 13th. I was going to say because personnel board has their hearing on the 16th. Um. You have those trainings the 13th. You have the trainings on the 13th and 14th. Um. If I recall, sign up for those, or do you know which one? Um, just doing? tell Jennifer which one you want to go to. Is there a list somewhere? She's got it. Okay, I'll check the list. You didn't tell me. You <laughs> did not tell me to the board, Jennifer. What? You didn't tell me to wrangle the board. I did. You didn't answer the email. Touche. <laughs> 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 so. <laughs> it's the 13th and the 14th, 1.30 to 3.30, which on Monday, the 13th, I would rather you not go to that one. And, and no, it's, it's, yeah, it's full. No, um, or the 14th, 1.30 to 3.30, or uh, 4 to 6. 4 to 6. No, 6 to no, 8. 6 to 8, sorry. Uh, there's an evening, there's two evenings, two afternoons. All in person. Um, all in person. Yeah. Hmm. So Monday, Monday afternoon is full. So the 14th a lot of the EMTs are coming in. 14th at 6 p.m. So. Yes, uh, um, I can do the 14th, but I'll be late. You can send her an email if you want. Yeah. I'm going to send you an email, and then you're going to yell at me and say you didn't wrangle them. <laughs> now, or are you good? Send her an email. Okay. What do you need? You need, just tell me. I got it. 14th at 6 for me. Okay. Me too. Okay. So what, what, what did you guys do? 14th at 6. Tuesday. Tuesday. Six. Uh, you don't have to post that as a meeting with two of us at it. Right? Training. Because no, it's training. We went through the planning board and zoning board. I thought board. so. I just figured I'd better ask. No, we actually asked that question. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I just want everybody to, I want this on people's radar screen so that we can get the hiring process completed. Mm -hmm. um, it has taken quite some time. Yeah. So I will let the guys know um, that you would prefer we do it that way and see if I can, maybe they can do it, maybe we could just do a doodle poll. So keep an eye on your email. Okay. Um, but I do think it should be a separate meeting so you can focus on. Yeah, I, no, I'm fine with it. It's just uh, so booked up already. I know, I know. And I hate, to add, I hate to add to that because I know what it feels like when that's the case, but we need to, we need to facilitate this and get mm -hmm. it. Okay. Um, I do have one other question, and Trevor, you need to hear this question. So my question is, and Kevin's going to laugh at me, 
Would the board consider at some point, relatively soon, but maybe with a ceremony at around the 350th next year, um, naming the Leary lot the Leary lot? <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Is it not? I mean, why would we it? always call it the Leary lot, but it isn't physically named and identified. It's 59 North Main Street. The only reason I know is I had to finish the EV charging provisioning form, so I had to figure that out. Oh. Thank you, Kevin. Um, he's obviously watching at home. <laughs> but the reason I'm asking is we've always referred to that lot as the Leary lot. And maybe you recall, did the Learys actually gift that to the town? at some point, because I thought it was named after the people. It was referred to as the Leary lot because of the people who- There was a the big place. apartment building there at one time. Yeah. So we need to name the lot- Owned by Leary's. Yeah. So we ended up with the lot. No, We've always called the it lot. the Leary lot. How did the town- I don't remember. I don't remember that. I don't remember that either, but I know it's the, always been referred to- The Cumberland's to was, that was the Putnam block. Yeah. Yes. Redmond's is the apartment. Redmond's is Redmond's where the package store is now. And we Late, should ask Harold, you would know. The other. But I'm wondering, could we name it that? Because we always refer to it that way. And I said something to Denise Mason this afternoon. Because she said, well, where does it come from? Or, you know, she made a comment about not knowing where it came from. And I said, it's one of those things that's just existed institutionally. Mm -hmm. But we all call it the Leary Lot. And frankly, it, it is a way to memorialize the, the way the town obtained the property. Can we get our town historian to look into it? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because oh, of, Peter Thomas. Peter yeah. Thomas, yeah. yeah. Because the property in between the Congregational Church and the library, there was an apartment house called the Tilton Block. Oh. Oh, is that how we ended up with the Tilton Library? <laughs> no, the Tilton Library was there first. Well, not first, but oh. that block was actually older. Wow. So, you know, there's sort of a history here. Yeah. yeah. But so I, was, I was thinking about there's that. There's a lot of history in this town. Some good, some bad. Yeah. Yep. I know. It's so interesting. Every time we um, have a three, we always call it the Leary Lot. Yeah, more remember. information. It's amazing. Oh yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to call him, yeah, he heard me say that. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Okay. Um, and so we also had two unanticipated things. Oh one man, of them, really? one of them too. Yes. Okay. One of them was so Carolyn <laughs> talked to me this afternoon. The, we voted the cultural resource officer through the end of the year, December 31st, but the project goes further than that. Yeah. So, um, I thought that was always a thing, I'm about to talk about that, but I thought it was always a <coughs> just June leave. to June. Well, normally our apartment's appointments are June to June, but I thought that this appointment had to be an, uh, a town resident, because a lot of our appointments oh. are town residents. Right. But in this case, we have a situation where this project that the cultural resource officer is overseeing is going to go beyond yeah. the end of the year. So right. it, makes, it makes sense to just continue it through the fiscal yeah. year. So June 30th, yeah. like we do with March. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It also okay. gives us a little bit of time to figure out if it does. <laughs> well, I would just I like to... It would, would it? I don't know. It depends. I don't have any background. I can imagine it would. What? I can't imagine that job would need to be a resident of Deerfield. There's nothing he requires it, it. Anyways, right? Right. He, he's the one that did the job description. Well, exactly. So, he, he's the one who saved all of our stuff. Yeah, and he, so you know, he just signs off on the, like, this is a USDA grant one, so. Uh -huh. We're speaking of Bud Driver, by yeah, the way. Who is so the public understands it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would just make a motion that we extend the, our vote or what we voted, we just make it to June. Motion to continue the appointment. June. 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 I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? I Carol. I Carol McDaniel. And Dave Wolfram. <clears throat> and one other one, I got a phone call and then an email um, from a person who is interested in being appointed to the yes. Town building oh, yeah. advisory yeah. committee. Oh, mm -hmm. gosh. Um, yeah. Actually, Matt sent Matt the Russo. email. Yeah, it's Matt Russo. Matt sent me the email after he called me, and it was mm -hmm. right yep. as the meeting was starting. Yep. Yep. So they I do mean, have a meeting tomorrow, and I guess, you know, this is one yeah, of those no, situations where. We well, I would make a motion that we appoint Matt Russo and thank him for being okay. willing to start Absolutely. up on the committee. Yeah, I saw them. I saw him this week and weekend at the transfer station, and he was definitely mm -hmm. interested. So, yes. 
I, I would second that motion. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Chairman McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Now, Fatima, you got to sign up with Barbara in the morning. Yes. Yeah. So I will send Matt an email in response saying that you appointed hey, Fatima. Him. He's going to get trained. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. No. He's get, now that he's appointed to, he has to come and get trained too. Oh, I didn't tell yes, him. He does. Everybody has Everybody to. Everybody does. You might as well, would, would you just send an email to, or Bud, you need to tell Bud that he has to say Yeah, I think, I think, um, talk to Kevin. I think Kevin has said something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's, what's Matt's last name? Russo. Russo. Thank you. Captain Laser Drive. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Matt's wife knows my husband. Kim? Yeah, Kim. My husband grew up right next door to his. To her grandparents' house, so they know each other. Small world. It is a very small world. After a wedding, I brought Kim's father home. You were you going to read that again, or we? Oh, I just wanted to make sure we did. I don't think we, we talked. I talked about it last, 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 yeah, last, the last meeting. Yeah. We talked. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Is there still time? What is there? I, I, which one? Um, that? that was the food. The donate, food donation. Food yeah. I think it's still going on. Yeah. So, um, Deerfield donates uh, to Toy and Food Drive. It's sponsored by the Deerfield Recreation Department. Um, this has been another difficult year for many households in Franklin County. Let's join in the holiday spirit and help those in need. We need new unwrapped toys for children of all ages, um, so they would be great to be donated. We need food for the Franklin Area Survival Center. Donations of toys and food could be left off in the Deerfield Town Hall entryway out, out here. Um, for those who do not want to shop, gift certificates, donations to area stores may be put in an envelope and addressed to the Recreation Department and put in the drop box. Donations will be accepted um, from December 1st tonight to the 15th. For more information, it's recdepartment at town.deerfield.ma.us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I, I think this is and before we close the meeting, do we have any public comment? Yes. <laughs> Please. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, yes, I just was um, interested in follow up, whatever you could do. Um, last July, we had talked about um, developing a policy for appointments. Um, overseeing qualifications and um, requirements when people are appointed to different positions. And um, I think that's kind of been on a back burner for a while. So I'm just, I'm wondering whether or not that might be something that the personnel board might even be able to draft for your, um, <laughs> here I'm saying for the personnel board, but draft for your review. And it, it seems like that still is a, a an important Mm, hanging item from the issues of last summer. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not a personnel board purview. It's actually a board of selectmen. So, uh, you know, a uh, select board, sorry, the, uh, that we review all that and consider it and in making appointments. And uh, we always ask for public in input into it. Um, well, there are but it's it, the personnel board does not tell us who to appoint. No, we no, make no. The I'm just um, I just am recalling that this summer there were was comments about just creating a policy with guidelines as to how appointments are made. That there's transparency with people who put their names in, and um, you know, different people, not just the select board, um, appoint people to positions. The town moderator. I'm not sure who else. Um, and so since it's been hard to, and, and it does seem that it would be very helpful for the people who do want to apply for different uh, appointments that they would know what are the criteria upon which they are being judged and what are the criteria that need to be followed in order to be eligible for an appointment. So. Um, okay. Well, thank you for your input, Annalee. Uh, we'll take it under advisement and we well, can go work on it. Thank you. I mean, one of the problems, one of the things, like we just appointed Matt Russo, is I have to say, Annalie, it's only 
I mean, we've worked with Matt for years and years and years, so on, on a lot of different boards. So it, it it's not that we don't have some oversight or we just no, randomly a top, you know, point somebody. Um, oh, got a good point. So, right, yeah. but there certainly was some stickiness this summer, and so um, and I think yeah. that just in general wanting to know what the transparency is when there are more when there's perhaps more than one candidate how are people considered and um yeah. it would, yeah. transparency is a good thing <laughs> thank you thank you any other public comment okay. hearing any do i entertain a motion to adjourn i'll make that motion i'll second that motion all those in favor aye aye aye, aye. Three zero zero.